We'll start in here. Yeah, what's up? This is H. Dizzle, and you're listening to the guy spot. Why can't I see myself in here anymore? I can't see myself. We're on Skype here. We're on Skype with with the one and only RPL. Can I call you RPL? You can call me whatever the hell you want. Dizzle. Robert Patrick <laughs> Lewis from the Far From Center podcast. If you remember him, he was a guy that is the... Uh, Green, former Green Ber- Beret. Former Green Beret, man. Great interview. But uh, he's one of our buddies now, and uh, he has got his own podcast going, Far From Centered. How's that going? It's going pretty well, man. It's going pretty well. We've got, I looked uh, on Libsyn, and we've more than doubled our listenership this month from last month. So it's going pretty good. Cool. So so what do y'all talk about there? I know I, li- I listen to the show, but li- li- give our listeners an idea of what and tell them how to get there. A little bit of everything. Uh, it's on iTunes. You can search uh, Far From Center Podcast, or you can go to www.farfromcenter.com. Uh, Far From Centered, because I know some of our listeners are emailing me originally. Like they, they, they thought it was like Far From Center. Yeah, centered. Uh, I'm trying to trying to do a play on words, like the whole left, right, center thing. It's all about that. You don't have to be a Republican or Democrat, just be an informed American. You should do so. what I do. Be like, the guy's spot, because there's a guy <laughs> spot, the T-H-E-G-U-Y, but we have an S in there, the guy spot. Be like, far yeah. from center. Center. <laughs> turd, with a turd at the end. <laughs> I think I should just start yelling more. There's <laughs> probably a guy typing in T-U-R-D, far from center. <laughs> it's like, he said it was a play on words. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cool, man. So, uh, yeah, check out farfromcentered.com and then at farfromcentered on uh, Twitter. You know, I'm glad I learned how to use Twitter, dude. I, I, I'm becoming I'm becoming a Twitter asshole, dude. I only read my own, I only check my own like shit if like people reply to me, and I I don't read anyone's tweets anymore. It's I ins- saw somebody one of my uh, the people that I followed today like they got on sometime this afternoon and said. It's been a busy day. Sorry, I haven't been on. I got a promotion at work. So who do we hate today? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'm a Twitter dick, dude. Like I'll follow people just so they follow me, and as soon as I see they followed me, I'll, I'll unfollow them because I'm like, oh, I don't God give a shit what this guy it, has to say. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna fuck dude. what this guy has to say. But he, I know he might follow because that's one of the things. Like when you when you read like tips on Twitter for getting more followers, mm-hmm. it's just like follow this guy and he'll follow you back but that defeats the whole purpose of twitter right because you're on there to to have interesting people and you're creating your own feed yeah but that interests you that you have interesting shit so if you're just creating random things like you you see these guys adding you and they have like three hundred and eighty thousand people they're following and then like there's 400 people following them. You're like, what the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> fuck well, this I think guy. you got to be more wary of the people that add you that you don't know that have like a hundred people they're following and like 40,000 followers. Because that makes me think at first you go, Oh wow. I must be very interesting. Go, I love those guys. Uh. Really? I thought that's some legit shit. It's like, Hey, this guy's got it going on and he only follows like a select elite few people. And I'm one of the chosen ones. I don't think I'm one of the chosen ones. <laughs> <laughs> like, why the fuck did he choose me, man? This guy claims to be credit. some guru. Do you, you ever get the impression that Twitter's like a bunch of inside jokes like half the time? Like you're reading people's shit and you're like, what the fuck are they talking? Like, I don't get it. You're like, yeah, I feel like an outsider is right? always, don't even you? on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Because it's always like, great time at the party last night. Fucking fucked ferrets all night. It's like. What? Hashtag loser. Hashtag. Well, that's my problem. Ferrets. I'll follow one guy and then I'll notice who they're tweeting. And then I realize like it's it's like high school again. I'm following a click and they're talking to each other and I'm just listening in and they're not talking to me. And I feel like shit after a while. Well, but it, it makes you wonder how much fucking free time some people have. Oh, there's some people that tweet people all the time. Yes. Dude. I know they, just, they tweet like nonstop, right? The people yeah. you're talking about. Well, you but see people you with like, like a- crazy careers, and they're like the 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 editor of the Wall Street Journal. Or this guy's a professor of ethics at fucking Stanford, and the fucking guy's tweeting all day. Well, that's part of their job now, though, right? I remember I was listening to Adam Carolla talk about like uh, being at one of the award shows as, as one of the writers, one of the guys that did Punch Up, and talking about like you know ten years ago, if you were backstage on your phone, you'd get yelled at for being a slacker. 
Now, if you're at one of these award shows and you're not on your phone, like constantly tweeting and updating and Facebooking and, and doing everything else, you get yelled at for not doing your job. Wow. Yeah, that, yeah. It, 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 yeah, it, it, and it's, it's getting to the point with Google Glass where everybody will be wearing shit on their heads and eventually you'll be able to control stuff with your mind. You synchronicity, know? dude. Synchronicity, it's going to be a transcendent of man. <laughs> is it synchronicity or is it that thing I was talking about? Singularity. Singularity, there you go. The synchronicity. Is synchronicity. synchronicity is a fucking no, album. No, no, no. Synchronicity is like that water sport that the fucking chicks dance at the same time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Synchronized swimming? I'm always looking for a titty to fall down somewhere, man. And it never fucking happens. <laughs> synchronicity. Let me Google that. I think synchronicity. I swear it's a fucking a album. There we go. It's a fucking album, had. dude. Synchronicity is oh, experience or two or more <laughs> events that apparently casually unrelated together by chance. You are yet experiences occurring together in a meaningful manner. You know, yeah, you, that's, you, that's you actually came up with something really deep by mistake. By mistake. That's how most of my good ideas come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Twitter, man. I, I, I'm, I'm digging Twitter, dude. I just need to get some more fucking followers. So if you want to follow the guy spot, just add us on Twitter at symbol T H E G U Y S S P O T dot com. The guy's spot. And we're all always looking for uh, emails and shit. So email us. We'll read your email on the air. If you have some like an issue or something in your life or you want us to talk about a topic or a guest or something or just want to like talk shit about the show or give us props. Uh, Email us at the show t h e s h o w at the guys g u y s s p o t the guys spot dot com, and uh, don't forget we're also giving away a uh, Google Nexus Seven if they still make those things. <laughs> 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 we're I think we're like thirty two reviews and like uh, sixty one ratings. So just review us if it's a five star review, you'll get added to the. Uh, the, this the shouldn't pool. be that fucking hard, right? People are just fucking lazy. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? I'm telling you because I I have this uh, app I use all the fucking time on my new phone, dude, and I've I've transferred it over from the old phone. It's fucking amazing, dude. I love it, dude. It's called Evernote. That's what I use oh, to like take like, notes wait on that, show. bro. No, I've been using it forever. I'm just saying okay. it's fucking awesome. And every like couple of weeks, like they pop up, like please rate us if you like us. Oh, and you just fucking they, bypass they go, it. It only is gonna take two seconds, and I'm just like, fuck you, dude. I don't have two fucking seconds, and I I do have two seconds. And this thing's fucking amazing, dude. It's changed my life. You know. So if the guy spot has changed your life, and you have two seconds, then just rate us. Yeah. If, or it has, it, if it hasn't changed your life, then don't bother. Nobody's going to fucking rate us. I'm telling you, dude. People are so fucking lazy, dude. I, I, I haven't rated our We're own We're going to give out that fucking account. tablet like five years from now. Yeah. I, I actually bought one. It's sitting here. So it's just going to keep depreciating. <laughs> I should have not bought it, dude. I should have just fucking held off and then looked for oh, one on good. Craigslist. Like three milleniums what, from What's now. Google on? What, what's uh, Android on now? Like what is it? What is it? Jelly bean. Then they have this uh, ice cream. What, what do they call it? You know I they're... think they do that to confuse the shit out of you. They don't put numbers on it because you're yeah. like, what do you got, man? I got fucking ice cream. You're like, I Bitch, got, I got jelly, jelly bean. bean. <laughs> so, no, so you're wondering, like, is jelly bean better than ice cream? I don't fucking know. <laughs> so no, like, no one has an old version, you know? Because yeah. if you're on iPhone, you're like, what you got? I got 4.0.3. You're like, I got 3.2. And you're immediately dated, you know? With Android, you're like, I got jelly bean, bitch. You're like, what the fuck is that? Aren't they True. changing Siri's name now, too? Isn't there a new chick uh, on, the, on the iPhone? What do you I mean? Have no idea. Really? I don't know what he just you said. Know, Siri. Siri, like with They're the four S her... Siri is the one where you can. Are they changing her fucking name? Siri, I am in Manhattan and I would like a blowjob. And Siri goes, <laughs> "Oh, you need to go to Fourth and Lexington." And now they're updating, and I'm wondering if they're going Why to names do like, that? like strip names, like fucking uh, princess and pony. Well, and probably because do Siri doesn't like connect but with people. But Siri has connected. I mean, if you say Siri anywhere, even a comedian can say Siri, and you know exactly what they're talking about, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So well, Siri has connected with Yeah, because you know what? Android has it, it, Google It is now. the worst name on earth that you probably could have picked. <laughs> hey, I was going to name my son Siri, bro. That's why I said it's the worst name on earth, bro. Anyone there kid Siri? I bet Siri? you there's some, some, somebody out there that, that named their kid Siri at this point. There's, there's a celebrity kid named Siri or Suri. Oh, yeah, there's Suri. I think that's uh, 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 Tom Cruise and, and his uh, Katie Holmes' Katie Holmes's kid, Suri. 
Maybe right. they just now, changed it to now Surrey. That's some worthless information. <laughs> <laughs> you know I what I hear? A bit dumber for knowing. <laughs> I got the most badass phone. Let me bring this up before I forget, dude. The Google fucking uh, Android system, dude. I remember I got the first one, which was like Google One or something like that. It was a piece of shit. And I fucking returned it right away. Went back to iPhone. But they have really stepped up their game, dude. And, and you know what? The, this this guy Steve Cook that took over for for Steve Jobs or Tim Cook, the the new CEO at Apple, he's a complete asshole. Like he sound the the things he says now, he sounds like uh, he sounds like uh, uh, my, Bill Gates. You know, Microsoft CEO. Now that Microsoft's just fading away, Bill Gates like throws in these little jabs at all the other companies, like they ain't shit. Like we're coming back. That's what Steve. Tim Cook, this guy Tim Cook, he's basically destroying Apple, you know? And and I got this phone, the HTC One. I was between that. We've talked about it on the show. I was between that and the, uh, uh, the S4. So they're both Android devices. Yeah, so there's an S4, right? It had, and, and finally I was sitting there and I was standing in the T-Mobile store. And I was like, <laughs> fuck, dude. Like, even, and I was like, fuck, yeah. S4, and they had the S4 in stock, but this particular store didn't have the HTC One. So the sales guy, basically, if he wanted to make commission, he had to sell me the S4. And he goes, he was pitching it he like goes a no, no, no. He goes, bro, dude, I ain't going to lie, dude. <laughs> he's, he's just like, Hispanic dude, I was in the hood. He's like, bro, dude, I ain't going to lie, dude. He was like, get the HTC One, man. I'm going to call up some stores, man. Check it out. And I was like, Damn. fuck. This dude's legit, dude. If he if he's making commission off of this and he's telling me, you know what, forget it, I'm gonna kind of pass up some money, just go get you the right phone. It's I gotta knew be pretty good. Would. Yeah, and I stood by him side by side. The only thing better, only thing, camera. And, no. Yes, Cam- it is. Well, camera has more megapixels. Well, that's fucking better. But Which this one has the Zeiss. One of those has the Zeiss lens on the camera, right? No, I think Zeiss is that. kind of a gimmick these days, isn't it? All lenses are great. It's it's is it a is it a f two the, like there's a thing called a f stop. I, I know about cameras because I do photography. So like the f stop is how big the hole is, like when you go down to the lowest level. That's what she said. This is starting <laughs> to sound fucking great. However big the hole is, the it's it's weird. It's the opposite. It always fits. So it if always the f stop <laughs> is like a lower number. That's a better fucking lens because the hole that the, the light shines through is bigger. That touches the sensor. Oh. So whenever it's nighttime, the hole has to be real big to allow Fuck the yeah, light. Fuck yeah, it does. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. So, like, this <laughs> lens goes... You're going to start getting me all worked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this, this lens goes down to a fucking 1.2, I think. Wait. Which is insane. Are we talking about phones? <laughs> <laughs> What so the fuck are we talking about? It's smaller megapixels, but at night it just looks better. And it's got this thing called Zoe, dude. I just take pictures of my kid, and it, it automatically edits it and throws music in there into the, and titles and shit. Like, you don't have to do okay, shit. That sounds gay. And no, All right, you, so let's forget that you just talked about your kid. Yeah. <laughs> Is there going to be a point where you think you can fuck your phone? Yeah. Hey, the, 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 the hole has to be pretty damn small for me to fuck it. Yeah, dude, I, I I don't take much. I may I may be Italian, but I'm I'm underrepresented in that part of it. Yeah. So so yeah. So I finally th- this guy goes, look, dude, just get the HTC One. So what I finally realized between the S4 and the HTC One, it's a bigger screen, and a little bit more megapixels, but the f-stop is better on the HTC One. So at night and shit, oh, really, if you don't use a flash, the pictures are going to turn out way better on the HTC One. I think I'm gonna get that. The phone, design man. is sick. Okay. I think I'm gonna get it. And I think the, PPI, the processor's even a bit faster, too, I think. Uh, I think they're about the same. They're both quad core. I swear one was like 0.1 higher than the other. I think yours was. Were they? Okay, I don't know that for sure, but I thought the Samsung Galaxy was a slight edge on it the processor. It just looks a whole lot better than the it's, Samsung. It's Everything's legit. better it's about legit. that phone. Here, here's why I knew it was badass. I, I was at this restaurant. The dude in front of me had an uh, iPhone 5. And I, I see him holding up, looking at it, so I hold up my phone next to it. And the iPhone 5 looked just antiquated and fucking just worthless. Have you seen the Windows 8 phones? Yeah, you know what? They're supposed to be amazing. My my, my, my sister has one. And uh, they, they're really good, but nobody gives a shit about Windows anymore. Like the moment you slap on <laughs> Windows, you know, the, it, you know, it's it's like I got a Lexus. And then some of the dudes like, I got a Ford. And then the Ford could be like the best Ford ever, like a completely souped up Mustang. But just the fact that the, the Ford badge is on there, you know, it, 
automatically you're like, oh, he's got a fucking four. That's he's what happens with, with with fucking Windows phones. Like Nokia has one. I'm not even fucking with you. It's fifty like seven megapixels. Nokia has an actual phone, fifty seven megapixels, window is that phone. A lot? Yeah, it's supposed to be <laughs> like mine is four megapixels and it's it's the bomb. Holy shit, that is a lot. Yeah, basically, like you, you can Damn. zoom into it uh, big time. You know, if you take a picture, it'll, it'll you can blow it the fuck up into like a billboard size. Hmm. It, it's kind of worthless, uh, like as far as you don't really need it. But it's amazing technology. But the fact that they slapped the Windows logo on it, people are like, "Fuck, it's a Windows." You know, that's why I am, man. I don't want to learn another phone, much less I've heard too much negative press about the eight, the Windows yeah. eight. That I'm like, "Fuck that shit." Yeah, the well, commercials I, all over the place, though. I see the commercial every day on the TV. I just know phone. I have a, a buddy of mine that I work with that uh, was all Mac. I mean, this is one of those dudes that he had an iPhone and iPad. He had the whole i system at his house. Everything was configured together. You know, he was just one of those kind of guys. And he came in like two or three months ago, and he had the Windows phone, and he got rid of every Mac thing he had in his house. He liked Windows 8 so much, and he was like, dude, it's Bill Gates. He's so baller, he can't even fucking stop. Bill Gates doesn't even <laughs> run that company anymore. It's Steve Ballmer, and he's running well, but- that fucking thing into the ground. His his whole idea was that they have so much money behind R and D. Once Steve Jobs died, they just went all in, and he was like, he, he got rid of all the Mac stuff he had in his house. He had the iPhone, he had Apple TV, he had everything. Got rid of all of it, and now it's all Windows in his house. And he See, that's that strange country. because I decided to give Windows another try. Whenever I was upgrading my uh, my iMac, I had an old iMac. It was like five years old. So I I went out there and I bought the most baller computer you could. I mean, I said, give me give me the most expensive shit you have, just because I knew it was going to be cheaper than an iMac anyways. So they 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 loaded out everything and I bring it home. I plug in all my podcasting equipment. Immediately, same fucking problems I had with Windows three point one. <laughs> shit just didn't work. Do you remember that scene from South Park where they've got the general? They're bringing up everybody to do the operation. Get behind the darkies. And they, uh, they bring Bill Gates up on stage and they go, you told us that Windows XP was going to solve all these problems. And he goes, well, <laughs> actually, Windows XP. And he just puts a pistol to his forehead and goes, bam. That's, that's, that's what I think of every time we see a Windows computer. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds funny. I don't watch, po- uh, I don't watch uh, South Park. Dude. I I've the only seen the Mr. Hankey episode, like, which I think oh, is the man. best episode ever. But that's the only one I ever saw. I just lucked out. I saw that one. There's so many. Uh, I, th- I think I think if everybody in the world watched South Park, it'd be the world would be a better place. See, I have make... Hulu now, so I should watch it because I can go back and watch every season. Yeah, well, the new one you gotta watch. You know, I think season six on. You know, because once once we're in this new technology age where you know graphics are so awesome, it's really hard to watch that old ghetto stuff they used to have. Oh, really? So like, it yeah. got better actually. I because it looks I like it shit better. to me when I watch it. Even the latest episode, it's like cardboard cutouts, like <laughs> moving at like three frames a second. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's hard to compare that stuff to anything now. You know, when you've got like video games that look like they're actual people, it's really hard to, to compare anything to that. Yeah, they speaking of, they just announced the uh, Xbox One, and they announced the new PlayStation. I think is a four. Is that the? Because oh, I got, I got a PS3, and I tell you, I fucking just watch movies on this thing. I just is watch that the Netflix one that's and monitor you? What's that? Have you seen all the conspiracy theories? Like it has this thing where it. It takes a picture of your entire room, I guess, and projects your room into the video game or the video game into your room. Yeah, the new room. one's going to have that. And new Xbox is going to have that built in. But there's all these conspiracy theories that are saying it's nothing but a monitoring device for Big Brother, that they're just going to watch you. Like when you're <laughs> watching porn on your Xbox and jerking it, yeah. they're going to take pictures of you and use those in case one day you get famous and they need a favor from you. It's quite possible because I, I read about these hackers – and what they do is they, they – you could be surfing a site and you, you install this thing without realizing it called a, uh, a Trojan horse. And basically from that point onwards, a hacker can control your uh, computer. They can turn on and off your webcam, restart your computer. They can just watch you and you don't know. It's going on behind the scenes. Those have been around for forever, bro. Yeah, usually they yeah. use it for, for these things called denial of service attacks. What they do is they'll, they'll take control of – like the hundreds of thousands of computers they have, they'll have those computers just go and ping websites, meaning like every computer will go on a website at one time, which will crash it, you know? But they could technically go in there and watch you, which is pretty scary. Watch your screen, what you're doing at all times. 
They found uh, three or four years ago that the Dalai Lama, like there was a private uh, intelligence firm out of Canada that actually took his laptops and all of his uh, his entourage's laptops and like swept them really quick. And they found that China had installed those programs on all of their computers. So they were basically turning on their microphones when their computer, their laptops were shut and turned off and they could turn on the microphones, turn on the video camera, turn on anything and just see what was going on. The scary part is they can turn on your video camera and that little light that lets you know it's on doesn't, it doesn't come turn on. on. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, there's so a lot of people. you could be, people... you know, playing the old five-finger shuffle and uh, somebody's recording you looking for your O-face. Oh, that would be me, man. <laughs> Think about that next time uh-huh. you're talking off. There might be a room full of Just people. put a piece of tape over your damn camera. Dude. Yeah, a lot of people do that now. Uh, I know I know. there's a couple websites set up for, like, whenever people get their uh, IMAX stolen. Uh because you can you can you can install a program on your your iPad or your uh, your your MacBooks to where if it's stolen you can yourself since you're the rightful owner just watch what's going on and and there's guys that just let their computer once their computer's stolen they just set up websites for whoever stole it and just post uh, live feeds of the video of dudes beating off or whatever. <laughs> there's one of this Pakistani dude that's stolen it. It's hilarious. It's like daily updates. Of the, that's all the guy does is beat off, I think, because every day there's new beat off videos. <laughs> <laughs> that could get boring pretty quick. Yeah, why, are you, why are you watching these again? Listen, I stopped watching it season six, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, there's this new controller, too, I want to get. It's called a Leap Motion. Have you seen that? If you go to leapmotion.com. Basically, it's a little box and like HT laptops. Pretty soon, everything will have it built in, but it's just a little tiny dot on your computer. Now, because it's not built into a lot of the computers, you have to buy it and it's like a little tiny box. But basically, all computers will have it built in soon. You just hold your hands in front of the screen and move it around. Like, you know how you can like touch screen phones now and iPads and stuff? Oh, yeah. Well, you do that with any, any screen now. You can even hook it up to your TV and you just, you, you just in the air move your hands. Yeah, my wife did uh, – <laughs> so, you know, my wife's an actress. We're here in L.A., and she did one of those, like, um, like hot car show model things for the uh, Consumer Electronics Show that was here a few years ago. And they had that. That was the, the display that she was just doing a favor for a, a friend of hers that was a casting agent. And uh, that's what she had to work at, the booth for that thing. They had that a couple years ago where you just set up your video games, and instead of, like – it's not even Wii where you hold the controller. You're punching and doing whatever you want in front of the screen – but it recognizes your face. It recognizes everything about you. Like it knows your preferences versus like your sister's preferences or your kid's preferences. Wow. Crazy where we're coming. And, you know, I heard Bill Gates, speaking of Bill Gates again, um, I heard he had this technology like 10 years ago where if you went to his house, everybody got this little like yes. uh, RFID thing. thing around your neck. And I know it what you're like, talking about. Tells you about you stuff had, in the house. It's, oh, dude, you had like a precedent. So, of course, Bill Gates is number one. I'm sure, his wife was number two, and then kids were three or four, or whatever. Uh, but if you're like the number one in the room, it, the room adjusts to your favorite temperature, your favorite light settings, your favorite music, your favorite mood, everything. Yeah. That's, uh, dude. Yeah, his whole house was, it was basically an RFID yeah. tag. Yeah. And as you, Walk, walked into that little segment of the room. It would adjust it like everything. Like you'd have TVs in every room. Half of, I've seen his house. It, it looks like this small house. Well, not a small house. It looks like an enormous house, but for a celebrity, it looks pretty small. And then you look at blueprints and you realize like 80% of his house is completely underground. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's built in the side of a mountain or something, right? Yeah. It's it's in Seattle, which my sister lives in Seattle, and she has a tiny like shack kind of house, and it's like eight hundred thousand dollars. Dude, Seattle's fucking. It's, it's like here in L.A. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Shit. She, she looks like a, a homeless person in, in in India, you know, like living in a fucking <laughs> shack pit, but she paid like a shitload of money for it. It's ridiculous. I have a friend of mine bought an eight hundred square foot house. In Santa Monica for eight hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, when the market was on the downswing. So is that good? That means like it, he bought it at a low price. He bought it at a low price. Yeah, and it, and that's the thing. Like you buy that wow. eight hundred square foot house for eight hundred fifty thousand dollars, and you got to put another two three hundred thousand dollars in renovation. Into that's it. how Seattle is. You know, you know, you both like I know you live in California, and I know uh, Bonafide's got a big base in California as far as family and stuff. That that just blows my mind because. It seems like you're living in an, in a place that's so crowded. It doesn't seem like a lot of fun, and you're paying these crazy-ass prices. I, I just don't 
I don't get the the allure of it because it is fun though out there. What what I'm waiting for, and this sounds really horrible. Uh, I'm not really waiting for it. I'm just very interested to see what happens because remember the last earthquake. It was it's like what was it ninety three during the World the Series Northridge, game? Yeah, the Northridge was the last big one. Was that during the World Series game? Uh, There's one sure, during the World Series, Series game, and shit just started going crazy. Was that 1993? I think that was the Northridge one. It actually collapsed, like I-10 and the 101, which are the major thoroughfares here. Was San Francisco, though, wasn't it? Dropped the bridges. Uh, was... I don't know. The Northridge earthquake pretty much took out Los Okay, Angeles. that was 1994. Mm-hmm. What city? Uh, uh, looks like it was California. Look at this. If you I Google said, Northridge earthquake. Say what it is. <laughs> yeah, I was like, city. what city? It looks like California. Uh, Los Angeles, California. LA? It was only so 10 was to 20 right. seconds. Uh, Dude, you don't have to worry 6. about that. 6.7. Kind of I'm looking at just Google Northridge earthquake and everything's collapsed in 10. And and they didn't have, they had just these few videos, right? They had these videos of like, because it was during a World Series game. I think this was the one. So they had the World Series where everyone looks around like shit just starts moving. But I'm just interested in a place like California now, if an earthquake and it's going to happen, you know, it's going to happen. I don't know what the what the, the probabilities are, but within the next year, 10 years, there's going to be a major earthquake. My my well, dizzle dizzle uh, uh, theory <laughs> right here, it's going to happen and it's going to be insane. There's going to be dudes running around with Google Glass doing like a fucking live show on YouTube. There's going to be. Uh, guys doing podcasts or just some some asshole holding his fucking taking taking a picture of his kid or something, you know, a video and an earthquake's gonna hit. It's gonna be crazy amounts of video coming through of just chaos or riot. I mean, we're due for either a riot. And that's or... another one. The L.A. riots. Like back then, we had some awesome video. You know, we if if you Google Koreans, you gotta you gotta YouTube this. <laughs> Type in Koreans. L.A. riots on YouTube, and you'll see these Korean guys that don't take any shit, dude. They're not scared of shit. They're on their rooftop with, like, AK-47s and shotguns. There's, they're just tearing shit up, you know? Like, people are trying to uh, loot their their, their uh, supermarkets, and they're just going off. They don't give a fuck, dude. <laughs> like, they are armed to the teeth, dude. The, the fucking riots hit, and they just come out of their, their, uh, their convenience stores and their supermarkets with, with, with fucking AK-47s. But... You know, we any riot, I don't think a riot can happen now. Right now, I don't think. But if an earthquake hits, it's going to be insane, dude. If if it hits in a place like Cali, in Los Angeles, it's 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 going to be off the chain, dude. The kind of fucking videos you're going to see, and you're over there, man. It worries me a little bit. Do you ever worry about that? What happens if an earthquake hits and I'm on the other part of town and my wife and kids are on the other part of town and now the roads are collapsed? There's yeah, no we've food, got no some water. pretty good preparation plans for that. Uh, and that's, you know, I, that's part of my, like, SF background. Like, we have a lot of planning and fallback plans. I'm actually, the book that I'm writing now, uh, it's not about natural disaster, but it's about this plan that all the guys from my old team and I have in place if anything happens, natural disaster or, you know, invasion or anything, where we have, like, certain meetup points. Like, from the moment it happens, we have established time windows to where, like there's five points between here and where they live and you know we're set to you know every 6 hours move to a new location why and do you move to a new one, location every 6 one. hours well the whole point is that you know we have it because you don't I don't want to get on the road just going west or going east and have them get on the road going west and just totally miss each other right so you set up waypoints between where I am and where they are and so each of us moves to one waypoint with every certain time window so in theory, we should both arrive at one point at the same time. Now, if they get to the last waypoint, they know I'm not so there. So you have so actual, house. like, let's say you have, let me meet at this gas station here, a uh, supermarket okay. here. So you've already given your wife, if, if shit goes down, if there's an earthquake, I want you to go here first, wait an hour. Yeah. Every one of us, my wife, myself, my wife, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and all the guys from my old Jeez. ODA, we all have manila packets in all of our cars and our houses that are my my instructions, you know, and all the guys on my old teams, we each have these for our families. And it's if shit goes down, here's what we do. And it's the meetup points, it's wow. satellite phone, phone numbers and all that but stuff. But like all the places there's gonna be so much traffic and that's fucking real though. The only we, place you'll be the only way you'll be able to get somewhere is by air, maybe. The whole point is recognizing the signs. So our biggest worry is invasion. Uh, natural disaster is a whole other thing. There's ways around natural disaster, but 
Like we really invasion have by what? Mind. Invasion by who and what? Uh, if you pay attention to the news right now, uh, it's not reported that much in the mainstream media. But the only thing that was keeping China kind of at bay uh, from from attacking us, or from from you know the two biggest kids on the block going to war, just like us and Russia in the in the Cold War, was our economy. You know, we do so much trade together that China would never really want to go to war with us because we have so much economic commerce together. Well, now our dollar is shit in our economy. I was reading an article so, on this today. Holy shit, dude. Well, and if you look we're at the We're battling fact, it out, right? We're The dollar and the and, and whatever the fucking Chinese – is it the yuan? The yen. The yeah, yen. The so yen. basically, like, we're the reserve currency. Well, you know? but that's changing. And it's changing. And here's the scary thing is that China and Australia have already gone away from the dollar for their own trade. So they're doing their own trade on the gold yen. And I have I did a podcast with Mike Rivera from uh, What Really Happened on this about the artificial stock market and all these other uh, things that are going on that you're not hearing about. But other countries are going away from the dollar as the reserve currency. Every time in the past that's happened, we've gone to war. Right? Iraq, so, right? Isn't that why they say a theory why we went to war with Iraq and Libya? Uh, Gaddafi, like Gaddafi, came out and said he was establishing his own dinar, like the gold dinar for 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 use within libya if you wanted to buy oil from libya because they have a shit ton of oil you're no longer going to use the dollar you had to use the gold dinar within a month we were there yeah and it's so that's scary, scary because now china and australia have already gone with that there's a lot of other countries china russia and iran have a natural gas pipeline and they've all got big agreements within the last couple of years so they're cutting us out of the loop. The guy you that scares me is this fucking Putin guy in, in, in Russia. He does not give a fuck. And he, he, dude, he a wrestler? <laughs> isn't he a wrestler? Or he does or fucking photo guy? shoots That's with his bears. shirt off. Yeah, he and he like wrestles bears. You do not fuck with a guy that wrestles bears. <laughs> but he's like a jujitsu guy, right? Or something? Yeah. Yeah. He's everything he, he wants KGB. to be, dude. He's KGB, dude. You do not fuck with those guys. I heard he actually calls like a random person like once a week or something. Just a random person in Russia and like, hey, you're dead. No, he's like, How's it all going? How's your job? Like, who's this? Putin. Whoa. <laughs> Did you see the thing with the uh, the lesbians that want to gay rights and flash their titties at him and try to like go They're to in jail, them? right? They're in jail, but dude, like what? Pussy Riot. Remember? That was the name of the band. Pussy no, no, no. Riot. That was the band they put in jail, but this was like a uh, last oh, month. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. This was in they another just, country. Yeah, and they just flashed their titties and bum rushed them. Like, dude, it, this, this, it was funny because everybody captured. There's a bunch of different news agencies that captured just this huge smile on his face where you could just <laughs> see him going, <laughs> yeah, that guy must just get laid left and right. You know, he's he's frightening though. I know I know some of these guys in the Ukraine and whatever. They, they there's this one guy in the Ukraine, and his face just started getting bubbles, dude, and it turned purple, and he had like warts all over his body. Like every square inch was these bubbly warts on his face, his neck, every square inch of his skin. And apparently, like one of these KGB guys threw some kind of I forgot the name of the poison. They threw some kind of poison in it that should have killed him, uh -huh. but he lived through it, and his face was just purple bubbles. Damn. You know, but, then, yeah, this Putin guy, basically basically what's happening, the rest of the world is, is catching up to us. You know, we used, to, we used to live around in America just like, God, we're awesome. We're fucking Americans. God bless America. We're fucking living this amazing life. And everyone else was living literally in their own shit. <laughs> and now all the other countries are living these amazing lives, yep. and they're needing oil and and. You know what? We need oil. Thankfully, we're, we we kind of have our own shit going right now with this uh, uh, the thing where they grind up mountains, basically, and it's racking. like uh, racking, fracking, yeah. Racking. Basically, they just they they find mountain mountain. They figured out like there's oil in a lot of mountains, so they just they 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 just grab mountains and crush them up and oh, and, that's and shale. Grind them. That's shale gas. Shale gas, yeah. yeah. So Canada and us, that's kind of help. But like Iran, Iraq, all those guys. That's have the oil. Stuff, it's on the other side of the world. China is is wanting it. Russia has it and wants it. And they're all kind of, I'm pretty sure, behind the teams teaming up against us. Because yeah. if you think about it, we're constantly driving all day long, all these millions of cars. Really, is I, I still find it unbelievable that we're able to dig up and refine that um, much gas. There's got to be refineries just pumping out shit nonstop 24 hours a day. I, I don't even money, see how it's man, done. Black gold. You know, whenever yeah. people are like, oh, oil executives, they're making too much money. I'm like, no, they're not. They, they, well, they stop pumping up oil. We'd be fucking just sitting around. That comedian, Daryl Lennox, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of him, but he's got a really, really funny bit about that whole thing. And he goes, 
you know, there ain't, there's no such thing as too much money. And the only reason I know there's no such thing as too much money is because I've never heard anybody say there's too much money when you find some money. Yeah. There's nobody that ever goes, oh, that's 40 bucks on the ground. I don't need all 40. That's too much. I'm just going to take 20. Yeah. They only say four, They only say there's too much money when you've got to pay it or somebody else is making it. Yeah, he's absolutely right. We found some money this weekend, actually. You want to you get in the whole Burt Kreischer? We can if you want, man. Okay, so here's the DL, man. Me and Bonafide basically hung out with Burt Kreischer all weekend. He was in uh, Austin. Yeah, he was in Austin doing a comedy, comedy show, show, and Three apparently, uh, Bonafide has Bert Kreischer on the uh, cell phone there. That's what I got. <laughs> yeah, so I texted him a picture of my cock earlier. Did you? He was like, <laughs> "Please blow picture up, please." <laughs> I was like, Fuck. I hope that's fourteen that megapixels. <laughs> Yeah, so so yeah, so Bert Kreischer's coming in town, right? So I, I know he's coming and, and and I see his Twitter. I'm I'm following his Twitter, right? So I tell my wife, we only had one car that night and, and for some reason, uh Bonafide just didn't believe me that Bert Kreischer was gonna be able to hang out that night because he kept tweeting something about an after party. And so I tell my wife, Hey, Let's go down because we only have one car right now. Like her car had a, a, a flat tire, so I tell her drop me off. There's this bar Bert Kreischer is going to be at, right? Drop me off there, and uh, I'm going to give Bonafide a call and have him meet me down there. So I, I get to this bar. I see Bert Kreischer already hanging out, and I'm like, I, I don't want to go up to him and talk to him because uh, Bonafide kind of knows him better than me. He's been on that trip flit and whatever. Uh, so I'm sitting there, and I start drinking one or two beers, and, and I start getting a little nervous. So I'm like, let me drink a couple more beers. I'm down to my fourth beer. Finally, I get a hold of Bonafide, and, and I convince him that I'm sitting right next to Bert. Well, kind of, I'm outside at this bar, right? And it's in the hood because this comedy club is kind of by the hood, but it's actually a great bar. I didn't even know about this place. That's right. Mr. Tramps. Shout out to Mr. Tramps, mrtramps.com. Uh, and... Uh, so finally, Bonafide's like, all right, man, I'll head down there. So at this point, I'm four beers it's in. It's like 11.45 right? at night. Yeah. It's fucking late. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm buzzing hardcore. Like, I, I should say I'm kind of fucking drunk, Yeah, bro. I'm kind of drunk, right? And so I'm waiting for, uh, for Bonafide. He finally shows up, and Bonafide's like, look, dude, you're fucked up, dude. Don't fucking embarrass me. And he keeps saying, don't throw me under the bus. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? I don't throw people on their bus, right? And I'm like, look, dude, like when I've been drunk before and you introduce me, you kind of roll your eyes. Don't fucking roll your eyes at me. That, that So that's something you said to me. And then I was like, don't throw me under the bus. And you're like, don't roll your fucking eyes at me if we're in front of Bert. <laughs> we're all like brainstorming this whole fucking thing. And Bert's like in the uh, other room. He doesn't even know we're there, right? And uh, I'm like, look, bro, bro, like I'm talking to Bonafide. I'm like, I don't throw people on the bus. Don't even fucking worry yeah, about it. Yeah, and then we basically did it. Like, all right, here we go. One, two, three. Yeah, so nice we, spot, and we go <laughs> up to fucking Bert, and like within the first three seconds, I'm fucking, the first guy that starts talking. Fucking Dizzles like throws me right under the bus. I like immediately, I, was, I didn't know I was throwing you under the bus. Like, like I see, I I don't have any social skills because I grew up staring at a wall, like living in a room just staring at a wall, basically. So I don't have these kind of social re, uh, interactions much to where I know what throwing under the bus is. I didn't realize this was throwing under the bus. So. We go see Bert, right? And I see, I see Bert, and I'm like, "Hey, Bert!" I'm, 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 I'm kind of visibly drunk, right? And I say, "Hey, Bert, what's up, man?" He kind of recognizes me, and but you can tell he's like, "Oh, this is a guy that tweets me about the MP3 player." Fuck, hey, what's up, man? And I'm like, "Oh, dude, fucking bona fide, man." He, he, I was trying to get him to come over, and he's just sitting around. He didn't believe me. And he didn't want to fucking come see you. He didn't want to fucking come see you. Is that throwing under the bus? Fuck yeah, that's throwing that me under, throwing the under the bus. How's that throwing Because you're sitting there I trying to look. I think that's the definition of throwing yeah. somebody oh, under the it? bus. <laughs> fucking dumbass. So that, I don't think Bert even heard a word I said. Then he turns around, sees Bonafide, and then his face just lights up like he saw his best friend ever. He's like, oh, my God, Chris, what's up? And I'm like, shit, dude. Like, he loves this, this this fucking Bonafide guy. Jesus, man. <laughs> So now they're all hanging out, talking about their trip flip experience. And apparently your trip flip was the highest rated one, right? That's what I hear. So far, yeah. So I'm just sitting there, and, and I'm talking a mile a minute, butting in every two seconds, right? And I, I'm telling Bonafide about, like, when I get 
a little tipsy. I don't know what I'm. I, I just go into this like talking about my whole life. You reflect a lot, dude. Yeah. You self reflect too much when you fucking. I think a lot of people do that when they drink, but you do it way too much. Yeah. So I'm telling Bonafide. What was that? What was I telling Bert about? No, because Bert was basically saying like, "Oh, you know, did you and Whitney see that footage on Trip Flip about the bioluminescent bay? I think it came out really well." And yeah. You, you looked at me and you're like, "Bioluminescent bay? You went to go see it?" And you had these, like, tears in your eyes, and you started bawling at the table, dude. I, I remember saying, wait a second, you didn't tell me you saw the bioluminescent bay. And I was like, I watch that shit all the fucking time. All the time on, uh... Like nature shows Na- and shit. I got the fucking Planet Earth Blu-ray. And then I just start crying, dude. <laughs> like a little bit. I just start crying. I'm like, I can't believe you saw the bioluminescent bay and you didn't even tell me i'm like that's my dream and i'm just bawling dude i'm bawling in front of bert and then i i guess i don't notice it because i have my head down crying and he's he, i guess he's looking at you like what the fuck is wrong with this kid <laughs> he looks over at me and my head just goes down and i shake it a tiny bit because i'm like what the fuck <laughs> and bert looks at you, he's like hey man pull together bro he's hammered bert is fucking inebriated i don't take my bert- alcohol good yeah, Bert looks over at you and goes, dude, pull it together, bro. Come on, man. Don't be crying over this shit. So I thought it was a little odd. Yeah, and then I start talking about, like, my whole, like, I got in a fight when I was a kid and my nose got broken. and All these stories that were, like, it. really weird. And then I, I pull out a picture of my wife. I'm like, I love my wife so much. She's awesome. And I start crying again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Robert, you there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, because your video went off. I don't know if you're there or not. Yeah, so I'm I'm bawling again over my wife, and I'm just like, I don't know what Bert's thinking. I'm thinking like Bert probably thinks you're like the biggest fucking pussy ever, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, we had to tell him the next day like why it happened like that. Yeah, and then then Bert gets up and he sings a Keisha song, and at first I don't know what the fuck was going on, but it was amazing. I videotaped it on my new HTC One. And I'm gonna put this on. I'm gonna put this on YouTube, by the way. Check it out. <laughs> Holy shit, that's loud. Let me turn it off. What the fuck? Dude, it's super loud. Kesha, this one's for you. Yeah. So he starts singing Kesha's. What is the song called? Die Young. Die Young. And and it's just me, bona fide, and like two other people at this karaoke bar. And he rips his shirt off. He just rips his shirt off, and now he's shirtless. There he goes. I'm going to post this on our YouTube page and uh, on Twitter. I'm going to tweet it out. <laughs> but you got to retweet this if you're listening to the show. Here he goes. His shirt's off. Oh, my God. He's hammered. <laughs> yeah, Bert Kreischer is shit-faced drunk. I'm videotaping it. <laughs> And he's karaoke and singing to Kesha, Die Young. <laughs> so, so like, I'm videotaping this, right? And midway through it, uh, I, I come around him, and I just scream in his ear, and I, I put the video on me. I'm like, oh, my. And, and I'm telling him all night about this HTC One phone. He's like, I could give a <laughs> fuck, dude. Like, you can just tell his face, like, what the fuck? And I'm, I'm just ranting about this phone, how amazing it is. I mean, yeah. I think I embarrassed the shit out of, uh, of Bonafide, right? Bonafide's trying to act all cool, and I can tell her he's shitting his pants. Like, what the fuck did I bring this guy here? You know? Or, or why did he call me over? So here, here I am while Bert's on stage uh, performing, uh, and I bust in like, hey, man, check out the guy spot. So he thinks I'm talking about his phone. He's like, there you go again with the phone. But I'm just trying to plug the podcast, right? And I had to edit my, my drunk laugh out of this video. <laughs> he thinks I'm plugging my phone, but I'm trying to plug it. Because I'm thinking the whole time. Holy shit, this is so funny. This video is going viral. I'm just thinking, like, this is a viral video. Oh, my God. You know, Bert's like, Bert's, Bert, who, Bert's like, who's that laughing? 
<laughs> Guess who? Who the fuck is this? This is the head banging, moss thrashing, trash <laughs> talking, out of control metalhead. How'd you get in there? Well, 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 you want to talk about karaoke, huh? So you're here talking about this bullshit, Bert guy singing, doing some stupid shit. How come you don't ask Metalhead about karaoke? Why don't, why don't you say, hey, Metalhead, what about you? Let, let me just explain to you a little story. Why don't I just tell you how Metalhead gets kicked out of five karaoke bars? And let me just tell you how Metalhead hey, got a DJ Metalhead, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the middle of a... Uh... I'm in the middle of a story here about Bert. Anyways, hey, Rob, you there? Yeah, I'm still here. All right, just making sure. I thought that was you laughing. I'm like, the fuck? He's drunk like Dizzle. <laughs> That's kind of what I sounded like when I was uh, talking to Bert. So so what happened after that? Do you remember? I, I, uh, I, was, I, I was think was pretty I was much plastered. crumbled the whole night. Yeah. So you, you I did... had to try to recover the whole thing. Yeah, but then so... I got his number that night, so that was pretty cool. Right. So he, he it was almost like a girl. We were courting, courting her, you know? <laughs> we, I was wanna... courting her. I, was just, I basically just asked her, Bert, uh, what are you doing tomorrow? And he's like, I don't do much in that hotel room. I was like, look, tomorrow we go to the springs and lay out and watch, look at hot chicks. And he's like, sounds good to me. <laughs> Take my number down. I was like. Yeah. But unfortunately, the rain ruined all of that. So, it did. so now we're like backup plan, oh, and we're like, God, we got to get Bert on the podcast. Which, which Bonafide was like, just chill, dude. He's he's gonna. Yeah, come I wasn't all about that shit, dude. I was just like, hey, let's just fucking be cool with Bert because he's cool. Yeah. After a while, like hanging out with Bert, he was the greatest guy, man. I didn't even give a shit about the podcast anymore. Uh, I was actually so nervous to have him on there. Cause I we got a lot prepared. of good information from that guy when we had that fucking expensive ass lunch at Papacito's. Oh my dude. god! So so the next day, right? We 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 give Bert a call or, or Bonafide does. Bert probably doesn't want me to have his number. Yeah, did did I, he tell you like don't give this kid my fucking phone number? Well, when we went to have lunch with him, that was like the third day. But like the second day, my girlfriend and I hung out with him at night. And as soon as his comedy show was done, he looked at me and her, and he was like. What's up with your Dizzle friend? And why was he crying so much the other night? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh Christ! So I had to like try to, I had to recover all that. Yeah. So so we we go we go. He invites us to lunch, or we invite him to lunch. What was it? We invite him, or he invites us? I told him like, let's just go get lunch because we couldn't do the springs because it was too much rain outside. So we went to Papacitos, which happened to be right next to his hotel. Yeah, so I meet him there, and the first thing I do, I fake like I'm crying, and he gets his look on his face like, holy shit. <laughs> Here we go again. I go, I'm just fucking with you, Bert. <laughs> like, I'm sorry yeah. about the other night, man. I was a little tipsy. And we got a lot of good information from him. We got a lot of good insight into his like podcast lifestyle and all kinds of cool yeah, stuff Yeah, it was crazy. Does. We, we kind of got the DL on how many downloads different major podcasts are getting, which was really interesting, how much yeah, money yeah. some people are making, which I was like, holy fuck. Fuck, that guy makes that much fucking money off a podcast. Yeah, he's, Why did he's I ever right. stop my original podcast? You know, so, uh, and and then we, we, the like the whole deal was listen when when Bert uh, leaves like or, well, before or, we even showed up. Remember, I found some money in the parking lot. Yeah, and you found a twenty dollar bill, which immediately we're like, I was like, listen, dude, we we kind of found that together, and since I wasn't expecting to buy this expensive lunch here. This is going yeah, in. forced it on me. <laughs> yeah. Give me the fucking twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah, you found twenty bucks, and you've got a theory on finding money, right? Yeah, it's not a theory. It's just a. Well, I guess it is a theory. But if you look in between cars enough times in a parking lot, you'll find cash. Why is that? Because people, when they get out of cars, they put their keys or they take their phone out of their pockets, or they do all kinds of weird things, which causes cash to come out accidentally a lot of times. Okay. So that's my theory. It actually worked. Yeah. So we eat lunch with him. We're getting all this great information. He's just a he's just a fun guy to be around. But like to me, like finding out like what each person, how many downloads each person's getting, like famous people, yeah, big podcasts are getting downloads on their podcasts. I was like, hmm, that's that's a competition I have. But when I heard some numbers of what some people were making off of their podcasts, it just blew my fucking mind. I was like, what? Yeah, and he asked, he he uh, he gave our podcast a listen a little bit. Yeah, he listened to our MP3 player. I was I was like right. hell yeah, and he didn't. I don't think he he liked it. I could tell. I don't think he liked it that much, only because I think he's very accustomed to what uh, those top fifty kind of podcasts are like. And yeah, he didn't think that our podcast. We're gonna show that guy though. Yeah, but <laughs> honestly, our podcast is uh, 
It's just made to be educational, funny, and whatever. You know, fly by the seat. Look, of this pants. is what my podcast is. Is my 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 opinion on it. We're all in this world, right? Like for a limited amount of time. And let's be honest. For the most part, like most of the population is just trying to pass time till they die. Right. That's my opinion. Like this is what I'm trying to do. What is the least painful, most fun way I can pass my time until I'm dead? And that's what this podcast is about. We'll give you a couple hours a week to make that time go by. Like two hours of that time you have here every week will be our podcast to make that time a little bit more bearable. <laughs> that's, I mean, the, for most people, that's what life is. How do I pass this fucking time and keep myself occupied and not be in pain and misery? That's our podcast. That's it. Okay. You know, <laughs> and you might learn shit. I don't know. Whatever I learn, you'll learn. You know, I ask you a lot of fucking dumb questions. And if you didn't know that shit was like, like I had no idea about this shit with like with China that uh, Rob just told us about. Yeah, it's scary. That is it, terrifying. It's scary. As so we hell, could man. have we could have the biggest about. fucking podcast ever, super successful. <clears throat> China fucking comes here and bombs us. It would suck. Yeah. Or, or destroys our or destroys, destroys the infrastructure. Everything. Yeah. I mean that's. They're doing that, man, and nobody's nobody's really talking about. It. Like they're successfully hacking our power grids and our nuclear substations. There nobody's was just something uh, I read today where, like, China China has this great strategy. Like we keep finding, like they hacked this. They were able to go to Australia and 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 retrieve the entire uh, plans, like architectural plans for their their like type of FBI building that they have, whatever the FBI is in Australia, just built a brand new building, and they got all the plans for it, like everything. And us, I mean, they've they've hacked our nuclear facilities, et cetera, and we always trace it to like uh, buildings in 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 China that are linked to like their armed forces, and they all China always says, well, you know, "What the fuck are you talking about, dude? We don't hack people." You know? They've had battalions of hackers longer before we even knew that like this whole electronic warfare thing was an issue. When I was in Iraq in 2007 or 2008, they hacked our printers. They didn't even bother with hacking our computers, but they hacked our printers. And so any kind of like digital printer, they could they could see everything we were printing out. Didn't matter if it was a green side or a red side. They could see everything we were printing out. Like, it's unbelievable what they've got. And we don't even know everything they know. <laughs> That's the scariest shit. Yeah. We don't and even know printers what they are Wi-Fi now, too, so they're connected to the Internet. That's yeah. why we make as much money as we can in ten years and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> well, and that's the, you know that's that's the thing, man. Like, and there's I can't remember what movie it is, but there's a great great quote from a movie. They have an American businessman that works in China, and he says, you know, in America we look at the quarterly statements, we look at the next quarter, and all that we focus on, whether it's a businessman or a politician, is the next quarter. You go to China, and they're focused on the next quarter century, and that's that's where we're fucking up. Because we're looking at this short-term goal, low-hanging fruit, and we're fucking up the long-term. And China is just sitting back and letting us dig our own grave, man. And they're gonna, they're gonna fucking get us when we're when we're down. They're gonna kick us in the face. Yeah. Well, well, one thing China does, and, and I saw this news story. They flush their kids down the fucking toilet. Oh, dude, I saw that. <laughs> uh, how heartbreaking was that? And the video was insane. There's a kid. So, okay, so basically, and I'm sure everyone's heard of this. It was like the most linked story this week. But basically, they, they've, this 22-year-old girl, for whatever reason, maybe she couldn't get an abortion, was embarrassed to tell her parents or whatever. She claimed at first, right, that uh, she just gave birth on the toilet and didn't even realize that the kid was down there. But come on. She probably just had the kid because from what what they could tell, the police, like from for Senate evidence and everything, there was no blood anywhere on the scene. Uh, so she didn't really give birth on the toilet. Basically, she just flushed the fucker. She just flushed this kid down like a newborn baby down the toilet. Amazing story. He gets stuck in the pipes. And what luck. Like I was looking at the pictures of the pipe. It was the part he gets stuck in is the part that's exposed under the toilet. Right. So they cut, and this has got to be scary because how did they, know, how did they know there were, which part of the pipe to cut without like chopping off the baby's legs or the head? You know, I just tapped at it, and I could hear echoes on certain parts. Okay, so may, maybe they did it that way. Well, they, so they, they apparently they chopped off the right parts of the pipe, and, and the most shocking part is nobody took a shit. 
in the meantime before the, before <laughs> the the cop showed up. That's the part you're all hung up on. Because it's this, <laughs> I can't it's this, believe it. It's this high rise building. It was like this high rise apartment building. Oh, so statistically, there should have been a shit. There should have been like yeah, there was a good probability of shit coming down those. Maybe tubes. there was shit, and then they cleaned it up right before they let the press get in there and see it. Yeah, but the baby was completely blocking the pipe, so the the shit would have piled up on his head, and it would have choked to death. Maybe. What if it was just perfectly like perfect turds that were not like leaky or anything? <laughs> like yeah. diarrhea. No, type. it stacks up it's like China, no, it stands up. Color. It stacks up like Jenga blocks, you know, <laughs> or Lincoln logs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they cut this baby out, right? And it's this amazing video of this baby in a pipe, and it got its skull fractured, but it's pretty much alive. It's gonna live. It's a. It's a boy. Damn. And I saw the pictures of it. I was like, "Good, this is like some amazing. shit out of an alien movie or something." You're yeah, like, what the fuck is that? You, you think when that kid gets older, that's his claim to fame? Yeah, I was the, the kid in the fucking probably toilet. not. Or you think he hides it? Like his parents don't even tell him. Like we can't tell this. No kid. No one's gonna tell that kid anything. I think you should tell the kid. Fuck no! You just say your mom abandoned you, but the whole toilet part's kind of like, uh, I don't know. That's I don't know. You leave that part that's out. That's going below the belt. That's below the belt, <laughs> as as a nugget eater would say. I think they should just say that she's a shitty parent. Oh! Uh, man, that was a good one. Yeah. I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. Yeah. So so they, yeah, that's what China's doing, man. They're flushing kids down toilets. And that's the end of China. <laughs> <laughs> that's the end of our China bit. But no, what I'm saying is they're fucking ruthless. They don't give a shit. You know, if they come after us, we're fucked. Metalhead, what do you think of China? My, my neighbors are Chinese, and I wake up in the morning, and these guys, uh, like, I guess they had clogged their toilets. They're with, they, and I see them digging into, they, they had opened up, like, the little grill in the neighborhood where, like, the shit goes through. You know what I'm talking about? The cover for the yeah. sewer? Mm -hmm. And I see these couple, like, one on each side of the sewer grill. Like, they, they're digging, like, like, they're digging, but one, one has a spatula in his hand, and the wife has one of those wisps, you know, like the wisps that like you cook with, that you yeah. whip up eggs with. Uh huh. And they're they're digging into the shit pipe. Like I guess their the toilet got blocked. Mm, I'm like, what the fuck maybe. are these people doing? They're gonna destroy the whole neighborhood sewer system. They might be burying kimchi. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Sure Korean. they're Chinese, not Korean. Yeah, no, oh, no, they're, they're for sure Chinese. Metalhead. What? What do you, what do you think of China, Metalhead? Uh, about what the country, the people, or what? The music. Uh, the food. You know what? This is my fucking opinion about fucking China, man. After what I fucking heard. First of all, man, that's a crock of shit, man. China ain't nothing more than a goddamn piece of shit fucking country. All right? That's what I fucking think, man. You know, like, after what homeboy, what, what this guy was saying about supposedly... Robert Lewis? I don't know about technology, about supposedly... You know, China's stealing our technology and shit like that. Really, to tell you the truth, I don't give a shit, man. You know, those motherfuckers ain't fucking shit, man. We know already that the strongest force in the world is the good old U.S. of A., dude. So, wait, Metalhead, what do you think of their biggest city, Tokyo? Tokyo, Japan, right? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> He's actually yeah. a little intelligent. But how do you spell Tokyo? Why do you? Why are you? Why do you want me to spell Tokyo? Just spell Tokyo. So let's see if you can do it. T-Y-K-O. No, 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 no. It's T-Y, I think, I-K-O. I don't know, dude. Yeah, that's know. right. That's right. <laughs> They're both uh, yeah, right. They're see, both right. <laughs> see, if I ever win the lottery, dude, I would like to go to Tokyo, Japan, man. Okay. Why, why is that? Yeah. Huh? What, what's so alluring about Tokyo? Wrestling. Go, go check out the wrestling over there. Is that big? I guess. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. It wrestling. is big, yeah. Yeah, because seeing wrestling over there, see the wrestling, they have so much respect. Hey, is that your? Is that is that train coming from where you were at? Yeah, I'm at work. Dude. What do you expect, man? I don't know. I expect some fucking professionalism. What is that fucking? Anyway, sound? dude, wait, wait, wait. Okay, hey, you know roll what? Your, roll your fucking Since windows you up. All these fucking questions, dude. How come? Huck, okay, you hey, go to roll a your karaoke fucking bar. windows. There's always some sound coming. No right. shit, roll your fucking windows. There's always up. some uh, atmospheric sound. Like yeah, roll your fucking windows. Environmental up. sounds. All right. Did you roll your yeah, window up? Window. Yeah. I that can't be window. a good neighborhood when a train rolls through. Anyway, dude. I don't know anyone in a nice neighborhood with a fucking train <laughs> rolls through. How come every time? How come you went out with Bonafide to go out for karaoke? 
But every time when you come to Houston, when Metalhead invites you somewhere, you don't want to fucking go. Because he invited me to a place that, like, this is five minutes down the road. Imagine Houston's if, like three hours down the road. Up karaoke, dude. You need to invite Metalhead, dude. You need to invite me. You think that little shit that homeboy did? Man, why don't you fucking invite fucking Metalhead, man? You, shit. You know, to wrap up that story. Man that, that, that really got kicked out of five karaoke bars and fired a black female DJ. That's right. Metalhead got a chick fired. Yeah, because if she we're trying would to, not hey, play my freaking music. If we're trying to impress Burt Kreischer, why would we bring you again? Dude, probably just, done better dude, than just me. to go out there and fucking have fun, dude. That's we don't want to do. get kicked out of a karaoke bar. Burt might have to... liked him better than me. Yeah, because let me just tell you why they kicked me out. Because they don't like the fucking music I sing. They don't like all that growl vocal, death metal vocals that I do. But who gives a shit, man? Wait, I how, why there, did you? Why are you so proud of getting a DJ fired? You, you just made some girl lose her livelihood. Why, how did you get her fired? That doesn't sound like a nice thing. I'll just tell you why. Because look, I would go to this bar, dude, on a Friday. Because every Friday they had karaoke. Okay, I would go there, you know, see how to the bartender, like you know, really like tip the bartender, and really like you know, because I met the owner. The owner was a cool guy. Well, this girl, she did not like the music that I was singing. So every time when I got up there, she would always lower down my fucking mic. So one time, I'm sitting there drinking my two pitchers by myself, and this guy comes up to me and says, Hey, dude, why don't you sing some Slipknot? I said, Okay, what song? Wait and Bleed. All right, I'll sing it. I go out there, I sign up, I get up on stage, I sing Wait and Bleed. Guess what happened? After the song, I come back out. The guy told me, Hey, dude. We didn't hear you, dude. Really? <laughs> yeah, we didn't hear you. I was like, son of a bitch. And that's when I got pissed off at that woman. So, so I, said, I said, you know what? The last song I'm going to do, I'm gonna, I always do Bodies, Drowning Pool. Which God, that song soon, sucks. I'm going to put a video, I'm gonna put a video oh, I and I'm going to send it to the Guy Spot page so that way you can see me do some karaoke. Anyway, so... That is the worst anyway, song on earth. You know that, right? Bodies by Drowning Pool is the stupidest uh, fucking song. The it's not the most stupidest song, that dude. Is you know what that song, song. talks about? Huh? Ask they Rob. About a fucking mosh pit. Okay? And let's ask Rob what he, he thinks about Drowning Pool body pit. song. That's the douchiest fucking song on the face of this planet, bro. Dude, that in the, in the army, man, I, I can't even count the amount of douchebags <laughs> that just played that song. Nonstop. See, Metalhead, even Rob thinks you're a douche. <laughs> I, I'm not saying Metalhead's a douche, but I'm saying that song is fucking douchebaggery. Okay, so if Drowning Pool Bodies is a douche song and Metalhead likes to sing it, we can... So end... what? I like to fucking sing it. What's wrong with that? Nothing. We're if just... I want to fucking sing it, I'll sing it, dude. We're just saying I don't like douche. that country That's shit. All. I don't like that fucking hip-hop shit, but hey, I, I sit there and take it. What? That's not <laughs> rap rock. That didn't sound right. But anyway, dude. <laughs> so... I give the last ticket to her, and then all of a sudden, like, she decides, like, to take a break. So she's all playing her fucking music. She only wants to play that goddamn hip-hop. So I'm drinking beer, and, like, I'm, you know, I'm just saying straight up, you know? I look around, and some of the customers only like it, too. So I turn around and tell her, hey, why don't you play some fucking mix it up? Play some music or something. Play some goddamn country or something, man. Play, you know, mix it up. She gets on the mic. Ask me one more fucking time, and I will not put you on stage. I said, really? So luckily, the owner heard that, and the own and like you know, I was kind of upset. So luckily, the owner fixed it. Sensitive. He came by and said, hey, dude, uh, what song did you want to play? I said, I want to play Drowning Pool. He said, what song? Bodies. I said, okay, man, I want to hear it, man. And then all of a sudden, dude, she goes up to the bar. She goes up to that black chick, and, and, and I just heard her. You know what? You're gone. You're fired. And she got fired. By the time I got up on stage, she shot me a finger. I'm like, "Hey, bitch, you're the one that got you're the one that got Kang, not me." <laughs> Jeez, what yep. a wh- horrible guy you are, man. This is like the, the attack of I'm the extensive not a horrible vocabulary. Guy, dude, so let me like, just tell you like you. this. No, See, that's fuck you. Right. You're fired. I don't tip bartenders. Okay. That's why, because look, if I go, let you me tell you like bartenders? this. Picture this. Picture Bonafide, H Dizzle, and Metalhead going to a karaoke bar, okay? And let's say I go there to buy you guys some drinks. I buy the first drinks on the house, okay? Now, and then you tell me, hey, Metalhead, why don't you tip the bartender? Okay, I'll tip them. Yeah, that's cool. They give me good service, that's cool. But when you fucking skip me, when you fucking ignore me, that's why I don't give no fucking tips, man. 
And then that's where the bartenders get all fucking mad at me. They're like, oh, well, I don't want to serve you. Why? Because the thing is, because it's like, you won't give me a tip. Well, motherfucker, give me what I want. Okay? I, I'm the fucking customer. You want fucking tips? You want that fucking jar full of money, motherfucker? You give me what I want, okay? If I want a shot at fucking Jägermeister, you're going to give me a shot at Jägermeister. If fucking H. Dizzle wants a goddamn bottle of fucking Budweiser with a fucking lemon in it on the top, then you give that motherfucker one. I'm, I'm going to sound like a total asshole here, but I agree with him. Uh, I, I don't get it, dude. I... Uh, huh? Give me a beer, and uh, this 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 person hands me a fucking beer and and takes takes the cap off it. I'm supposed to give him a dollar. I, I work too hard for my money for that. Why are you talking like that? What, what do you mean? You're talking like you're like <laughs> you sound like super gay. Anyway, <laughs> no, I, I just don't get. It. I don't I don't get it either. The whole tipping at okay. the bar, I don't get it. What do you mean you don't get it? I don't get it. I'm 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 giving this person a dollar for handing me a glass. But they it, also mix drinks. And the shit transaction too. took literally like three seconds. Well, I, I agree. I agree. Sorry. I agree with you. Yeah, ahead. yeah. That's, yeah, I'm glad, Dizzle, you agree with me. But I still tip. Fun. But I still tip. No, but Metalhead's saying that he tips. He just doesn't like to tip. No, Metalhead over... doesn't tip at all. At all? What's wrong with that guy? Metalhead, do you ever tip a bartender? Nope. I don't tip a bartender. That's not very See, good. See, when I went to the Cannibal Corpse concert, I didn't tip the bartender neither. <laughs> He's proud of because, it. I yeah. tip. I just uh, I agree with him. I don't get it. Why am I giving Why am I giving this person a dollar for just? I don't know me why. Because these motherfuckers here don't know how to fucking serve beer. These motherfucking bartenders need to go back to goddamn bartending school and learn how to fucking serve a goddamn beer right. <laughs> and then another thing, what the reason why I don't tip them too? Because every time when I'm in fucking line, you have no money. I'm right there talking with these motherfuckers for a long goddamn time. What? What's going on now? Let me just tell you like this, Dizzle. I'm in line waiting, and then the bartender's talking with some chick or some guy for like about 20 or 25 minutes. That's why I don't fucking tip them. Oh, you're saying there, the bartender's no. ignoring you. That's what you're trying to say. But there are no lines yeah, at a bar. Exactly. That's why you I don't just walk fucking up. tip them. Just like waitresses, too. They're waitresses. talking to some other guy like this fucking waitresses. guy. He they wants a brain, beer, but he's not going to tip me. I'm not serving him. They brainwash shit on me about... Like the other day when I went to a restaurant, okay? I he go doesn't in there, tip I get a restaurant. Do you tip at restaurants? Dude, McDonald's is not a restaurant. <laughs> no, no. Listen, I went to a fucking restaurant, okay? Give me anyway, three chicken wings. I get my food. Like I'm eating two. it. I'm having a good time. I'm fucking. at the restaurant. I say, give me number two. <laughs> I'll take some sweet anyway, sour. So I was at the restaurant at the drive-thru window. By the time I'm done, I, I give her the money. And then she goes, go to the next window for your food. <laughs> no. And then I what restaurant big. are you eating at? Can, can you let me finish the no, goddamn? No, no, because story? I don't. You're needing can nothing but fat. Can you let me finish the goddamn story? Just tell us Set what restaurant up. is. What was the name of the restaurant? Yeah, no Give shit. Give me a fucking. The, like change back and all of a sudden hold on bitch. what was the fucking restaurant they don't give you change back at a restaurant so i already know you're bullshitting <laughs> yeah what restaurant is this where dude? do you get change back at how a do restaurant? you start a story without even telling us where the fuck you are it, man just let me tell the goddamn story what yep. restaurant you're full of shit i ain't full of shit okay name the restaurant there? Name just the... like you because no no because look i think you're full of shit with the karaoke dude because you know I'm surprised. How come you never invited me? How come you didn't? How come you didn't call me and say, "Hey, metalhead, we're going to a karaoke bar," you know? Hey. But no, you never want to go. That's all great, great and all, but what restaurant is it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it, okay? It was a Mexican restaurant, okay? How about that? Name it. We're getting okay, closer. Uh, we're getting Matt. closer. This might uh, name name name. Okay, the... so it's either Taco Bell or <laughs> Taco Cabana. Or okay. Taco Cabana. Is it Hey, okay, but listen. What was so the what name of the restaurant? Back. Name the fucking restaurant. I don't know the fucking restaurant, dude, okay? Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, was it a yeah, trailer? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay? <laughs> it was so a trailer. It was a goddamn change, okay? It's one of those trailer it's things, dude. Brainwash <laughs> on me and saying, well, does this belong to me? And I was like, hell no. I just told the girl, I said, hell no. That's, and I just took my change. And I said, nah, you know what? I ain't tipping your ass for shit. That's I don't why I don't know tip what you're him. Talking about so anymore. he doesn't even tip at a fucking restaurant. Did you ever see that movie Traffic or Crash? Where they had that I think it's Crash, where they have that uh, they have that scene with Ludacris and somebody else in a restaurant 
and he's just bitching and bitching and bitching that waiters don't ever oh, tip. Yeah. They don't ever wait on black people because they don't think they're going to tip. And at the end of the at the end of the scene, they're walking out of the restaurant. The guy goes, "So did you tip?" Goes, "Hell no!" <laughs> <laughs> that movie's crazy, man. I, all I remember about Crash is how the cop fingered some chick, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's the only part I remember. I'm like, God, that was so disturbing. I don't remember that part. I just know it was the best movie ever. You remember? Do you remember? I've that watched year? a lot of porns that started off like that, and I, I was even creeped out when it was. Oh, and I remember a scene where some guy's like rescuing some chick from an overturned car or something. Same one. Same one. Is it that... was the cop that fingered the chick, and the chick that got fingered. Oh yeah. That's I just it. know that movie because some Iranian guy in Houston that owns a bunch of real estate financed it, and that movie turned into like the hit of the year. And the he movie made like incredible. He made like hundreds of millions. You know of what's a really good that. movie too is Eleven Fourteen. If you ever get a chance to see Eleven Fourteen. Check it out. It's kind of on the same wavelength as Crash. Yeah, but you recommend Battleship. Battleship was cool. Which is in Redbox right now. It's close to oh, running go, it. Go I just it, couldn't dude. convince my wife. You got a decent enough Battleship? Story. Anyway, I've never seen that fucking movie. What the fuck is that movie about anyway? Hey, so what restaurant <laughs> serves chicken wings? That's what I want to know. I don't know, dude. Why the fuck would you go to a restaurant where they actually dude. serve you food hey, and you someone don't actually, them? Somebody actually tweeted us that his favorite sauce for... Uh, for 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 chicken nuggets is mango. Is that true? Mango sauce? What the, what the, who the fuck wrote that shit? It I was, thought uh, you said it was ranch. Vincent Vasquez. Oh, Pete Pierce shit, man. This this motherfucker must be a dumbass and shit, dude. Hey, dumbass! Whoever fucking wrote is this fucking ranch, you dumbass. Go back to fucking school and get your fucking answer straight, you stupid son of a bitch. Can you even spell ranch? <laughs> Anyways, all right, yeah, metal. Hey, Metal, before we let you go, bro, I heard that uh, recently you were buying a bunch of sound, like, it was speakers? That's right, PAs, baby. Because you're trying to, you're trying your hand at a new career, right? Wait, did a van approach you in a parking lot <laughs> and say <laughs> they had some extra speakers for you, Metalhead? Ha, 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 very funny. Ha, ha, ha. So funny, I forgot to laugh. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> You probably would fucking buy one Let of those. Let me give you the prize. Hey, so what me... brand speakers did you get? PB. Um, no. They're like a Har- Harbingen speakers. Harbingen. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> they're like Harbingen. They're, they're like uh, two speak- speakers. The thing, um, I got them like uh, yesterday and like it was like a sale, uh, like like a Memorial Day. And- Let me guess, Guitar Center. That's where he hangs out on uh, Black Friday. Yeah. Yep, exactly. That place is okay yeah. to get some shit, all right? He, at least he didn't buy it from a fucking parking lot. Harlingen is that town in, like, East Texas, oh, he's right? He's talking about... Har- Harbinger, Har- Harbinger, that's the name of the brand, okay? Uh, I know what he's talking about. Har- Harbinger. Harbinger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anywho, Spell I'm Harbinger. Speakers. Spell Harbinger. 300, 300 uh, uh, amplif- uh, watts or something, I think 300 watts has, like, you can put uh, two channels... And and I bought two wireless mics too. What is this for again? Huh? He's trying what to start a new business. I'm just trying to start something new. You know, you always gotta try something new, bona fide. Yeah, know? why don't you gotta... fucking stop buying speakers and actually improve your diet, though? You gotta try something new from the guy that eats chicken nuggets every day. <laughs> You're so funny, bona fide man. I'm asking you a serious fucking question. Why are you buying all these fucking crazy speakers and trying to start something new? Look at these when speakers. You're gonna, like, They're enormous. No, no, no. But They're my, 15 my point inch. Is, he might. I got some that's 15 inches. Hey, no, but like seriously, like he's spending money on speakers, but he fails to take care of his health, which might kill him in like 30 years. You can't even enjoy speakers in 30 years if you're dead. Uh-huh. Very funny, bona fide. So you think. You think I'm not taking care of myself, right? You I think, think oh, you tell us, dude. dude. I have I'll... to listen to Bonafide. Okay, Bonafide. Hold okay, on. Okay, I'll listen to you. We'll, we'll what else prove do you it. Me do? What did you eat for uh, breakfast today? Shit, I didn't eat nothing for breakfast, dude. As usual. <laughs> and what about lunch? What was lunch? I didn't eat nothing for fucking lunch, dude. And what about dinner? I didn't eat nothing. I don't eat no <laughs> dinner, dude. You just fucking <laughs> bought these speakers. He has no money for food anymore. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you ate? I ate like today. Uh, what? God damn. You just said you didn't eat. Okay. <laughs> what did you eat today? <laughs> I don't even know, dude. No, seriously. What did you what eat today? What kind of fucking. How are you supposed to tap <laughs> someone he, he's out? He's gotten on the mat? embarrassed now. No, to no, tell no. Us. He's going to enter this fucking dude. tournament. Okay, look, dude. Look. 
Look, I eat whatever, dude, okay? Look. What did you eat today? I like this bona fide. Don't no, be embarrassed. I whatever, dude, but I still work out, okay? I still exercise, How dude. are you supposed to tap out somebody on that? a mat when you've had nothing but, like, some gummy bears today? Like, I don't get it. Like, how are you supposed to train when you don't even have food in your fucking body? I don't get it. What did you eat today? I just ate a fucking hamburger, man. I bought a big hamburger, dude. <laughs> From where? <laughs> McDonald's? No. No, like this uh, restaurant called Niner's Grill. Oh, okay. That's the healthier yeah. than McDonald's, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so what, what is your new business? Why are you buying these big-ass speakers? These are like the kind you see at concerts, like on the stands. Well, I just want to maybe try DJing, man. That's what I want to try to do. DJing. And yeah, that's what I want to do. And do, do you have, like, DJ experience, or how, how, how are you going to learn? I can learn, dude. Dude, you know what we should throw a big, what are you we DJ? should throw a big party for the guy spot and he'll be the DJ. It's gonna be nothing but metal music It'd and a amazing. ton of fucking like dudes with long hair and like a big mosh pit. <laughs> no, we should no, we should What's that? No, because No, because really Dizzle reason why, because you know, really I bought these because I wanna try something new, man. You know, like you know, just just try something new because I don't know, man. It's just and, and what's your advertising campaign? Like, what's your marketing? What's your marketing campaign going to be? I mean, to get people to hire you. Well, well, really, I don't know yet. Like right now, I'm just working on. I'm trying to work on how to how to connect the speakers, how to how to like you know, because so far right now, I only got the speakers and the microphones. But so you I'm, don't have like the the wheels, like those spinning wheels, and you don't have like a CD player, any of that stuff. No, no, no. Like right now, I'm just using, like in the songs from like from my Samsung Galaxy. But but like next week, what I'm gonna do is I wanna be like shopping around, see if I get like a laptop, you know, so I can put all the music on there. Man, if you don't really have much of it together, you should probably just return the thing, man. Why? Well, it doesn't. I mean, I don't know. It just seems like. You're you're questioning this stuff, and then you're sinking six hundred or almost a thousand, maybe two thousand dollars into ah, something you don't know man, about. Bonafide shit. You're so crushing like, you the man's move. dreams. I'm not crushing the man's dreams. I mean, either. Let me just tell you like this, bonafide. Good DJs start when they're like twenty years Ooh. old, man. Hey, or like let me just tell you something, bonafide. What's you that? See, that's your thing, man. Let me just tell you about the fucking dream, dude. Everybody has an American dream, dude. It doesn't matter how old you are, dude. It doesn't matter. How fucking old, how fucking shape you be, man. But you know something? That's if you got a fucking dream, you gotta go for it, dude, okay? Thought, like yeah, whoa, whoa, says, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold the fuck on. His dude. dreams just change every no, 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 no shit. Your See, dreams are changing too much, man. This was all worried about fucking dying. He's always worried about fucking death, man. I don't give a shit about fucking death, man. I ain't afraid of fucking death, man. Yeah, but, but you know, hey, you know, I, look, hey, I get hey. up every fucking morning. I get up and I do my fucking shit. I don't give a fuck what happens to me, dude. I just get up and I fucking go, man. Right. If I fuck fall, I don't give a shit. But the only reason I told you to return it is maybe you should focus more on this tournament and not getting your ass kicked. That's all. The Naga tournament. Yeah, the Naga tournament. I cannot believe. And besides, man, besides, I am still fucking doing the fucking tournament, too. I am... I am doing it, dude, okay? You, you're spreading yourself thin, dude. And you know how many chicken nuggets you can buy with 300 bucks? No shit. <sighs> you see, that's why Metalhead we doesn't just say have a lot good, of this shit. We just dude, have a good... We guys have... Do, no, 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 no. Just it, I just want to just throw we it want, back. Hey, we want you to succeed, but you can't succeed if you start, like Dizzle said, like spreading yourself too thin. Now you want to become a DJ this week. You were a pit fighter last week. Like, photographer what, like, what's wrong bought, with this what the fuck is wrong with that anyway? because I got a feeling, focus, man. I got a feeling he what? sold my camera dude where is he coming up with this money anyways did you sell my camera <laughs> what <laughs> no did you really sell my fucking camera do you have my camera <laughs> oh shit <laughs> he didn't sell it. you're so funny you're so funny do you you're have so... my camera huh do you still have my camera <laughs> The fucker sold my camera, dude. No way. He's got that that laugh just to, when he says what? Like I know I caught him. No, but anyway. Metalhead, did you sell my fucking camera? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Metalhead, where like I haven't seen a single video since I gave him that camera and he knows I gave it to him at a steal. Well, the problem is, dude, is just like I haven't had time with that camera, dude. Do you because... have the camera? Huh? Do you st- 
Do you still have the yes. camera? Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. Well, so next how, time, where I'm did in you town. get the money for these speakers? How, so th- far, dude. Let me just tell you about your little camera, Dizzle. I really do like it a lot because I've been playing with it. But the book, I I don't study the book. What I do is I I go to YouTube and I just look at a video and it shows me how to use that. Shows me shows me how to use your camera. So that's what I've been studying a lot. So, okay. Okay. So, well, so as long so, as you don't sell it, dude. No, no, look. Because so far, dude, out of all the camcorders, this camcorder, the one you have, I like it, man, because, you know, because. Okay, okay. They, they, Just want to make sure you didn't sell it. And we're not trying to crush your dreams, okay? Well, I hey, I have hey. one last question. I'm so sorry. What are you going to do with two speakers and a microphone right now? Don't Got worry about it. Phone a <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just asking you, like, if you don't have the turntables. <laughs> He's going to put it in his you, truck, what? back in his truck, and run around town screaming. I'll hey. tell you what, I'm, like what? Today, did you hook it up? Today, did you hook it up yet? You pop the question he's gonna do the DJ part where you talk between the song. He's just not gonna play the songs. He's just gonna keep talking between the songs. <laughs> the day you, uh, you know, the day you have, the day you pop your question with your girlfriend, huh? And you need a DJ. You call me. What just DJ with me. no music and just two speakers <laughs> and a fucking voice? You just call me, dude. Are you gonna have just any music? Me. No music, dude. Just not talking. Don't worry about it, man. You just... All right, we're going to go. Next song is called Silence. Next song is whatever's on the radio. Here we go. <laughs> Next song is Cannibal Corpse. Strip oh, Rapist. great, yeah. <laughs> this going to be a wonderful All right, way. Metal. Hey, you want to stick around and just sit in, and you can buzz in whenever you want, or you want to leave? We're going we're gonna to talk to... Because I know you mentioned dreams. I, I want to talk to Robert about dreams. You hey, wanna... I'll stay. I don't care. All right, cool. But don't, 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 don't butt in too much. This button when you think it's some uh, smart. Cool. <laughs> All right. Hey, Robert. Yo. Yo. So, I know you've been experimenting with dreaming recently. You told me, right? Yeah, lucid dreaming. Now, what oh, I've are, done that before. How do you do that? I've oh, tried. That's amazing, dude. You can nearly jizz all over yourself if you really try dude, hard. Dude, it's unfreaking believable. Wait, Have you, you ever seen Inception? Yeah. Yeah. It's basically inception. The whole idea is that you trick, you don't trick yourself, but you just train yourself to be able to recognize when you're in a dream. You know, because when you're in a dream, you don't really know that you're dreaming. So you just train yourself to be able to recognize when you are dreaming. And then once your mind understands that you're dreaming and you understand that the, the laws of physics and the laws of man. Whoops. The person. Hold on, bro. Yeah. Sorry. Hold hey, on. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> it's all right, Anyways. but that's it. There's, there's just all the there's basic little there's little tips and clues that you can use, and that there there are ways to kind of train you to recognize when you when you are actually dreaming. You become lucid. You become awake. And you can control your dream. See, see, I'm having an issue where my can't even I can't even sleep, and then I don't ever dream anymore. At least I don't remember them. I had that for years, man. Like I couldn't after my first trip to Iraq, I couldn't really sleep for probably five years, and. To fall asleep, I'd have to basically knock myself out with like melatonin and yeah. bourbon and, and whatever I had. And I, I take New Mood, and uh, and it really it helps now. Actually, it's the first time I've ever had restful sleep. Well, see, I'm and, always uh, thinking of things, and my mind won't stop. I'm I'm sitting in bed just thinking of stuff. Yeah, that's the way I am. There's a lot of little tricks. Uh, you know, they say like if you're in bed and you're trying to go to sleep, and you're there for more than 15 minutes and can't fall asleep, you should get up and go do something. And then come back like a half hour later because if you just sit there, you sit there and you're thinking and then you start thinking about the fact that you can't fall asleep. Then you get pissed off. Then you get, <laughs> you know, it's hard for you to fall asleep and it just, it's a never ending cycle. So they say if you get to a certain point where you look at your watch and it's 10 o'clock and you lay in bed and you toss and turn and you can't stop thinking and you look at your watch and it's 10, 15, just get up, go do something Come back thirty minutes later. Lay down. Dizzle would never go to bed. It, no, it's it's like yeah, it's the most nightmarish thing though. You you're sitting in bed and you're just yelling at yourself for eight hours. Sleep, motherfucker. Sleep, sleep. Go to sleep. Yeah, Why aren't I used you sleeping? to do like Benadryl, and you know that was when I got back when I got back from my last Iraq trip. That was the big thing was just drinking myself to sleep basically. Um, but now you know, then I I went over and I started trying Benadryl, and then I started trying melatonin. And uh, now I take New Mood, and it, it, it works. I take two New Mood right before I go to bed, and I'm out, and I can actually dream. I take two New Mood and Alpha Brain, and uh, it puts me out, and I can actually capture this whole lucid dreaming thing that's 
It's crazy. Do you remember, what is that drink at the convenience stores where you can, it's like in a purple can and you can take it and it puts you like in a relaxed state? You know what I'm talking about? I've seen some stuff that like it's in the little five hour energy bottles. Yeah, that's the same some thing. weird it's like looking shit. Melatonin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you know what I'm talking about this? Oh, yeah. It's no. like in a purple can. I don't know if they call it uh, pimpin' or something, pimp juice or. Oh, oh, oh. oh. But it's something like it, it relaxes it's called you. Like in. drank or something. Or drank, yeah. It could be something like that. But it basically, it's the reverse of like a Red Bull. It, 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 it's from Houston because in Houston they take sleeping, uh, not sleeping, cough medicine. Yeah. And that's like a drug, actually. It's called Scissorp. Scissorp. Yes. Well, no, Scissorp is coating, is cough yeah. syrup with coating in it. Yeah, so I think what That's you're like talking about is shit, yeah, I think you're talking about a drink called Scissor, which no, is like a I'm fake. I'm talking about this other thing that's in a purple can that was like, when you look at it, you're like, wait a minute, this is the shit that like doesn't energize you and doesn't get you all drunk. It fucking gets you the reverse way, you know, gets I don't you know. to sleep. See, I take melatonin, and I, I, I almost like it used to when I first started taking it, it would come in one milligram caps, and it's like don't take more than two. Then they start making three, and then five, and now they make ten. And it's like, don't take more than two. You shouldn't be on that stuff that <laughs> So long, I took man. like I took four of them, forty milligrams the other night, and I took two five HTP pills, and I take five Alpha Brains, which are like, don't take more than one. And I, I, I was like, okay, I'm gonna get great sleep. I'm gonna lucid dream. I basically overdosed on bullshit pills. Yeah, Alpha <laughs> Brain's tough. I, and if I take if I get my timing wrong with Alpha Brain at night, it fucks me up. Well, I didn't uh, sleep at all. Yeah, well, it's good. like if, you, if you've already got a, a mind that rambles a lot, uh, you don't want to take Alpha Brain. Like, you, you got to make sure you do it right when you when you're going to bed. Like, I take two right when I wake up, and that's good for the day. And then I take another one right before I go to bed. So, like, I brush my teeth, I take my glucosamine and my fish oil, and I take New Moon and Alpha Brain, and then go directly to bed. Because if you take it like two hours before you go to bed, and you have a brain. Like ours, it's kind of going at warp speed all the time. You will never fall asleep. And you can legit lucid dream. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you remember any of them? Well, that's the whole point of lucid dreaming. Like if, if you want to start, there's a lot of different things on the internet you can find. But one of the best ways, and they have uh, iPhone applications now too. One of the best ways to start is by keeping a dream journal, right? Because that's one of the things they say you might be lucid dreaming and not actually remembering it. So you can have you can have this whole experience, but if you don't remember it, what's the point? So you train yourself by starting logging your dreams. So as soon as you wake up, take, make a journal, log everything that you can remember about your dream. You'll notice that it gets progressively more and more and more to the point where you might at first only remember a tiny, tiny snippet, like I was chasing a dog or something like that. But after you do it, you get really good at it. You know, within a month or two, you can start remembering your entire dream. And then you start making little cues for yourself where you can realize that you're in a dream. So they say anytime during the day when you're actually awake, look at your watch and look at it again. Anytime you look at like a clock or a watch or anything, look at it more than once because in a dream, they'll never stay the same. The numbers will never stay the same. They'll always change or they won't actually be numbers. It'll be gibberish or something like that. Uh, or look at like signs. Anytime you pass a sign like on the wall, look at it more than once because in a dream – you know, typically change, or you won't be able to read it, or it'll be incomprehensible, or something. Or well, other people do things that's kind like of freaky, though. Every, it's yeah, it's crazy. Once you can start to do it and actually realize that you're in a dream, that's when it, it's it's nuts. The first couple of times you realize it because it's it's a weird instant thing where as soon as you have that realization, and it takes it takes training. You know, like for me, uh, whenever I'm at a table, like I knock on it. Or whenever you come to a doorway, I knock on it. Or I make sure to always look at my watch three times. Or make sure to, I look at a clock or a sign three times. And then the first time you do that in a dream, just because it becomes an autonomic thing that you always do, the first time you do it in a dream and it's different, you go, holy shit, I'm in a dream. And you kind of wake up and you're lucid within your dream. And then if you you know, you know study this stuff a little bit and you realize I'm, I'm awake, I'm lucid, I'm in a dream, none of the laws of physics apply. <laughs> That's when you start That's to like true. stretch your brain. It's just trippy, man. Hey, you can do a lot of weird things. Have you ever had like a lucid wet dream? No, I I know that some people really get into it like that, but I'm I'm a nerd, you know. So I'm more I, I'm into it for other things like flying and, and working on problems that my brain can't solve while I'm awake. I just I have fun with it, man. There's there's all kinds. Of, I mean, you can it's the sky's the limit. Literally, you can do anything you want. 
Uh, but for me, it's more fun stuff that I can't do physically, you know? Yeah, I, I have an issue where I, 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 I'll be dreaming and then I'll wake up and it's, it's, it's nowhere close to where, like, it's time to wake up, you know, and I can't sleep. Yeah. Well, they say that's another they, – they say that that's the easiest time to lucid dream, actually, is if you wake up before you have to wake up and go back to sleep. They say that second dream state is the easiest time to lucid dream. For some reason, once you've had, like, a, a couple of REMs of REM cycles – and then you wake up and for some reason you're awake for like a minute or two in your bed and you go back to sleep. They say that second cycle is the best time to lucid dream. Yeah, I'm going to have to try that. You're going to have to go to sleep first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need to figure out this whole sleep thing because my sleep has been fucked up for years. Just because back in the day uh, when I'd get picked on a lot, like growing up, like people would like egg my house or break windows and shit to where it got to the point where I'm, I would consciously be like, I'm not sleeping at night. I'm going to hang out outside of my house and wait for these fuckers, you know, in case something goes down. Do you work out? Do you exercise or anything in the morning? Uh, no, I don't. That's a, a big one. Like getting your gym time down right is really good for your circadian rhythm. Uh, and there's a lot of studies that say the morning is the best time to work out. You know, you wake up, you have to drink like a full glass of water within, you know, a half hour of waking up. And then if you work out in the morning, not only is your metabolism running throughout the day a little bit hotter and you're burning more fat throughout the day, but it also gets your circadian rhythm on the right timing so that your body knows wake up, work out, you know, lunch, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, sleep. See, I'm not one of those guys. That, that, like these are people I'm really jealous of. They're like, okay, I'm, I'm going to t- I'm going to bed. They have a set bedtime, and they put their head on the bed, and literally they they're snoring. My dad's one of these people. They're snoring three minutes after their head hits the pillow. It's a struggle for me. I'm I'm sitting in bed looking at the wall. I'm thinking of something. I'm thinking of that, and, and sometimes I'm just thinking, just fucking stop thinking, go to bed. <laughs> yeah. I've done, I, I, and I had those issues for years and years and years. I'm telling you, that's the best thing. Like I used to travel all over the time. Like my body had no internal clock for, for, I don't know, maybe five years. Cause I was all over the place so much and in different time zones all the time. Uh, and they say, you know, there's different ways to trick your circadian rhythm. Uh, they say like when you get into a new time zone, like if it's a, a vastly, you know, five hours plus difference, when you get there, don't eat until it's time for breakfast the next morning. Wake up, go for a run, eat breakfast, and your circadian rhythm will immediately get on that time zone. Because uh, it is a powerful thing. Once you understand your body and your body clock and your circadian rhythm, it's really easy to get it in check. You just got to figure out what's the best for you. Uh, that exercise is a key part of it because if you're laying down and you can't fall asleep, that means your body still has a lot of pent-up energy. Uh, so if you can, you know, you need to alter your diet. Maybe you're eating dinner a little bit too late. But definitely, like no. See, I, that... I eat I eat like eight meals a day, so I'm always eating. I yeah. actually wake up in the middle of the night. Sometimes I'll take a protein shake. Hmm. And that usually puts people right to sleep. Having a big like protein meal usually just knocks people out. Bonafide. Do you do you just fall asleep right when you hit the bed, or how's it work for you? Yeah, if you get this, if you try to fall asleep the same time every night, it gets better. Does it? I need yes, to do that. See, I don't have a set a time. Time. Bro. I have a one to two hour window in which That's I might not sleep. Good. I'm like I like need to go to bed by midnight every night by midnight or by eleven. Yeah, that's I need like to. I need to do that. And and you really don't have even a job or whatever, you know, like a set schedule. So that's pretty. But the crazy part is I worked. I was uh, already riding my bike in the neighborhood at five eighteen this morning. Oh, were you? Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> I get my workouts done. I do my main workout in the afternoon, but I do my cardio early. Okay. It's not bad. Well, I'm going to have to start setting something here. So Yeah, just make a schedule, man. Your body, the human body is a machine. I mean, it's nothing more than a machine. And you just got to set that machine to the right setting, you know. Uh, and that's everybody's a little bit different. But that's from what I found. And I had a lot of issues sleeping. Uh, that, that morning run is the integral part. And then, you know, making sure that you do the same thing. So try to wake up the same time, work out at the same time, eat all your meals at the same time, lay down and go to sleep at the same time. Yeah, same time, everything is good. Especially the, like the parts where it gets kind of weird and complicated on the weekends because you're like, oh, yeah, free time, I can do whatever I want. And then you fuck it up. Yeah, yeah exactly. You have, to, like, get, you have to get to bed at the same time. It's just the way it is. 
Believe me, I mean, it's easier to wake up on like times that you want to wake up. It's easier to go to bed when you want to go to bed. That's just the way you got to do it. It is shit though, because I get up at like four in the morning uh, during the week, and so on the weekends, if I if I do, if like the wife and I like Friday night, we'll have a movie it's night. It's all from yeah. Sears, and we saved a bunch using our reward points. My bad, sorry. I was pulling up your links you had sent me, and it, it had an ad in there. Oh yeah. That's yeah, the worst that when you're thing. surfing you... porn and one of those ads pop up. You're trying to be all quiet in the middle of the night. <laughs> hey, you want to get into the news real quick? Yeah, sure. Or or bona fide. Did you want to talk about your valet stories? Well, it's up to you, man. You I want mean, to save it for a week. We're, we're at we'll a, save it for a week where we're just We're an around. hour and 34 minutes into the show, so let's, let's do some news here. So uh, I got some news here sent in uh, from Rob Lewis. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the ones I have up here. You tell me which ones are the most interesting. Uh, so there's a new virus that's a threat to the entire world. Disney World, a patron finds a gun on a ride. Houston is unstoppable while Texas is America's number one job creator and growing crystal meth in Afghanistan. Which one do you want to talk about? I like the meth in Afghanistan. <laughs> you know, what's going on with that? Because I know you did you did you serve in Afghanistan at any yeah, time? Yeah, I was in Afghanistan. I spent about eight months in Afghanistan. Oh, that uh, stupid website. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because uh, you know, like Afghanistan's always been known for opium and heroin. Which yeah, I've is... seen those videos of the uh, Marines walking through those poppy fields. Yeah, yeah, and it's funny because it, I mean, it's just strange because that's the exact opposite of. Uh, it's the exact opposite of crystal meth. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's kind of strange that now they're saying this scourge is going to, it's destroying the fabric of their society because all of their young, uh, all their young men are, are now hooked on meth. I, I would so. think it'd be better to be hooked on meth than they're hooked on like religion. Like they are over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Maybe that's why they think that it's uh, a plague for their uh, society because it's taken them away from religion. I don't know, but they're saying the uh, the number of crystal meth samples taken from Caesars tripled to 48 in uh, in 2012 compared to the year before. And uh, I don't know, it's nuts because there's all these things that they don't really know what's going to go on when the U.S. leaves Afghanistan. And uh, it's just strange that that this is uh, that this is one of those things that's coming in because it's the last thing you would think. Like that's been the world's problem for the longest time has been keeping opium or keeping the, the poppy from leaving Afghanistan and going throughout the world. And now they've got their own drug problem with stuff coming in. And it seems to, that it came from us. Yeah, well, I just want to see the uh, Cops Afghanistan show. <laughs> <laughs> Never going to happen, man. Oh, there's always crystal meth. One of, one of the three cops uh, situations they have is always some, some chick gets pulled over and she's got no teeth and crystal meth. So, so yeah, so that's a big deal, huh, in Afghanistan is crystal meth, looks like. I uh, guess now that's, I mean, it's the weirdest thing because, like, I don't know, at least here, if you're a tweaker in the U.S., like, out here in California, it's a big deal where they have, uh, you know, like, all these car shops that are open 24 hours a day, like car park shops, because you got a bunch of people in NorCal that basically just, they're tweakers, and they just wrench on their cars, like, 24 hours a day. What do you mean wrench on their cars? They like home. they're people that Superman go in on the weekends. Home. They race their cars. Oh, okay. Like they do mud races or they do drag races or whatever they do, and so they just they just they're just tweakers. They just do meth all during the week and work on their cars. And then on the weekends they go race them. I knew Vin Diesel did that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, what the hell are you gonna do in Afghanistan? And like, where you live, you you can get one of those medical marijuana cards, right? Yes, sir. Do you have one of those? Uh, I am not going to comment on that. Okay, you, you can't <laughs> comment on that, huh? Okay, okay. Never but, mind. But yeah, it's uh, AKA, it's very yeah, easy yeah. to do from what I'm told. <laughs> yeah. See, that, that one I wouldn't mind moving on. No comment. AKA, uh, fuck, I have one. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> you know the craziest thing about it, though, like California. I fucking swear to God, uh, if you ever want to know the wrong answer, just look at what California politicians are doing. They finally got it legalized. They had all these pot dispensaries. Like, California is in huge economic problems. They finally found a way out of the economic shit they're in, and they cut up their fucking feet. Like, now they're outlawing again. They're going through and they're closing all these different dispensaries. Like, they made this deal where, you know, they, they, they approved it, and then they didn't approve it. Like, they just don't know what the fuck to do. They need to figure that shit out and then uh, transport it over to Texas. 
Well, it's this, the, I, I thought Texas would have been one of the first ones on board because really, see, I would think that would be money, the last dude. It's one. fucking tax money. Yeah, it's like, just you got the all these hillbillies living here. That's a problem. Dude, hillbillies smoke more pot than anybody else. Yeah, man. but where do you think it comes from? They're all Republican, dude. Jordan, Republicans Texas. just, you know what? From from what I can tell, if the Republicans just jumped on the pot bandwagon, they'll get a shitload of votes enough to maybe give them some kind of power Dude, and from a purely business perspective like you look at alcohol and all the stuff that alcohol causes right now and the amount of money that the tabc brings in from taxation of alcohol and pot doesn't cause anywhere near the same effects and the only reason they can't really bring a good study is because they can't really really find they can't do a true study that finds the amount of people that are that are that are high that are actually smoking pot because it's illegal so they can't go just like they do with alcohol they can't study the amount of alcohol sales. Yeah, nobody wants here. to talk about it. Like, even the guys that want to smoke pot have to bullshit. Like, oh, I don't never smoke pot. Oh, I, I, I want to do that shit. Just because, well, like you said, it's illegal. people do say outwardly that they smoke pot do more harm than good to that whole movement of smoking pot because it's fucking douchebags like Little Wayne and the Jersey Shortcast. You don't have, like, I don't know, you don't have a lot of upstanding citizens. Like, you know, in the 50s, it was cool to have a martini or a bourbon, you know, at a dinner party or, or after work or something like that. And you you'll never see that like you know a, a fifty or a family sitcom today where the father comes home and smokes a bowl after work just to kind of chill yeah. out. You know, it's, you know, it's gonna same. happen. You know, I'm just hoping it's at, at a point where I can kind of enjoy it. You know, I'm not some old fart. Well, from a purely business perspective, and I think that whole idea that you know, oh man, we can make paper and everything out of hemp. Yeah, fuck, maybe we can, but. Who gives a shit? Like we got, we've got booze. You know what I mean? Like we're 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 taxing the shit out of booze. Why can't we just tax weed? Like, like that hemp protein. It? I was I was at hemp vitamin. Well, I was at that vitamin store, right? And it's like thirty nine dollars for five pounds of 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 whey protein. Mm-hmm. And I, I was like, you know, I hear about this hemp protein. I said, show me this hemp protein. So he takes me to this corner. And it's really like a, a a a box the size of like a Coke can. It's like eighteen ninety nine. I'm like, are you serious? Fucking yeah, because protein? they can't even grow it here. Like hemp has none of the none of the properties of TH. It has no THC. It has none of the properties that are gonna actually get you high. But they can't grow it here. They grow it in Canada and they've got to ship it in. I actually had one of those on it. I had my first uh, hemp protein bar. They have they make protein bars now from on it, and uh, they're pretty goddamn good. You really love this on it. I like it, man. Like I said, like I had. Do you get free shit from on it, or are you paying for it? Uh, yeah, we get free stuff. How do you get free stuff? Uh, because they're one of our affiliate sponsors. Make me an affiliate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll, I'll shoot you the contact for the guys that, that I've been working. Yeah, with. because uh, I've actually been to the on it place, and I must have fucked it up. Uh, I started crying and then and, uh, <laughs> talking about uh, bioluminescent bays. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, shit. Maybe you should send Bonafide in. Yeah, well, yeah shoot me that <laughs> info, man. I'll, I'll see if I can get some on it stuff going here. Yeah, it's good Because stuff, I, do like, I, do like, I do like Alpha Brain. I think we can get Metalhead on it and see how we can do our research study. Dude, that's scary. Smart Metalhead. Uh, dude, I don't know if the world's <laughs> ready for that. <laughs> yeah. But I'm telling you, that new mood, like I tried – so many different things. And it it's was got 5-HTP in there, right? It's got 5-HTP, but also has this chamomile extract, which I think is the uh, the secret yeah, right I there. Yeah, I need to check it out then because I'm doing 5-HTP. So, hey, maybe we'll have uh, Alpha Brain as a sponsor here, and you guys can check it out too. Uh, yeah. We'll, I'll, I, Dizzle will test it out before he uh, tells people to uh, try it out. So don't worry. If it, if it doesn't work on Dizzle, I'm not going to recommend it. I love that stuff, man. But if you're if you're having sleeping issues, New Mood is one of the first things that I've ever found that I can. I take it. I go to bed. I actually fall asleep. It's restful sleep. And when I wake up, I don't feel like hungover, like Benadryl and melatonin would just fuck me up, man. Yeah, uh, check it but out. But the New Mood, it's awesome. Yeah, and hey, hey, to our listeners, if you like our show and want to support it, and uh, at some point we're gonna have to make a living off of this, or the the, the show's gonna go dead. You know, we we're talking. I was talking to Bert Kreischer about that. I was telling him how. Listen, whenever I first started doing this podcast, there weren't a lot of people doing it. That's why I blew the hell up. Then I stopped doing it, and I came back in, and there's literally like every fucking asshole is doing a podcast. 
<laughs> There's some dude on the toilet right now doing it. Like, we could do a metalhead show, and people would, there'd be a few listeners, you know? But there's so many people doing podcasts that now is the time. Look, it's, you're going to, you, within the next three, four years, you're going to separate the winners from the losers. You'll have the guys that have listeners that'll keep doing it. And then you'll have the guys that, like, maybe like us, that are putting out a quality product, but we don't have that many listeners. And, we can't figure out how to make a living off of it, and those guys will fall off, you know. And you'll have the podcast uh, community shrink quite a bit. Right now it's just bloated, you know. There's a lot of shit in there, and there's good podcasts that can't be found. So spread the word. Support us. Go to our webpage at theguyspot.com. And if you're buying something off of Amazon, then uh, just go through the box that we have on there. And or just click on it and bookmark it, and uh, anything you buy will get like a small percent of it, of it. You know, and if enough people do it, then uh, we'll be able to somehow make some money off of it. So, if you like the podcast, you don't want to see it go away. Support us. You know, and we'll figure out some other ways you can support us. But right now, the most important thing is we get more listeners. You know, that's what we're looking for. So spread the word and uh, support us by going through our Amazon page. Uh what else we got in the news here? I I know that, that the guy from Abercrombie & Fitch, their CEO, he doesn't want fat, ugly, unpopular kids wearing his clothes. That's what that's actually like what he he talked about in an interview. He was like, listen, this is exactly what he said. He said, candidly, we go after the cool kids. A lot of people don't belong in our clothes, and they can't belong. Are we exclusionary? Absolutely. So basically, he doesn't want fat, ugly people wearing his clothes. What do you think? Did you see fire? that campaign that people started in retaliation for that? Yeah, they they they're they're giving homeless people his clothes, right, and then yeah. doing photo shoots with it. But it's like That's a terrible awesome. slam against the homeless, though. If you think about it, it's like the ultimate disgrace for a homeless person would be to wear an. an Dude, they get free clothes. I mean, you can't really look a gift horse in the mouth, right? I'm trying. I mean, I keep thinking about it in like, what's the difference between this and like Hooters restaurants, you know, or those places that have. You know, like you, you can't. We we cater this restaurant only to males, and we want a female staff only. But what's the real difference? I mean, if that's the way he wants this company run, I'm not supporting it. But I'm just saying, if that's what he wants to go after, everyone's got a target demographic that you go for in a clothing line, especially a clothing line. I mean, you just can't be like, oh, I'm gonna make yeah, clothes for everyone. Yeah, but you don't come out and say it like, "Fuck you, you." He fat, didn't say "fuck ugly, you." Fuck. That's basically what he's saying. Did anybody was that urban legend or is it true that the Tommy Hilfiger CEO said he didn't want black people wearing his clothes or he was upset true. that I think that's like true. so many no, rappers no, were wearing no his way. clothes? Or no, I think that's true. And then the, all the black people to retaliate, just everyone bought his clothes, and now that's like <laughs> one of the main people that buy his clothes. Yeah, Tommy Hilfiger, black people, comment. <laughs> oh Snopes dot com, Oprah Winfrey. Through, okay, the claim is Oprah Winfrey threw designer Tommy Hilfiger, Hilfiger off her show when he announced that if I knew that blacks and Asians were going to wear my clothes, I would have never designed them. He said that on Oprah? No, hold on. Uh, the rumor, blah, blah, blah. Uh, holy shit, this is the long, uh, longest fucking Snopes ever. Is there just a true or false? Uh... Da, da, da. Hmm, weird. Okay, fucking fuck Snopes, man. They need to just put true or false on the top. I don't know. I think they did. At the very top, there was a false. I swear. Is it? Let me see. It's false. Okay, it's false. That 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 didn't happen. Tommy Hilfiger didn't say. But but we know that the CEO of uh, of, of 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 Abercrombie and you know what? I don't wear Abercrombie and Fitch because whenever I'd walk into their stores. It's just a whole bunch of pictures of guys with their shirts off all surrounding me everywhere I walk. And I just felt really gay about it. I'm it's not, a little homoerotic. Yeah, I'm, I, I got nothing against gay people, but I'm not gay. And then when I feel really gay when I walk in it, I just felt really gay walking to an Abercrombie and Fitch store. I think those stores are so gay that gay guys are uncomfortable. <laughs> What's crazy <laughs> is like their catalogs like have naked like young chicks in it, dude. The only cool thing, they were the first ones that had good cargo pants. Uh, but then once everybody else kind of got on the cargo cargo pant bandwagon, they can go fuck themselves. And, and then they have this store called... Uh, I used to work at Abercrombie Fitch a long time ago. Did you? Yeah, many times. Did you have to wear your 
like did they tell you to clothes. wear a certain way? No, you just have to wear the in season clothes. They probably saw you and like, oh, he's he's muscular. They gave you fifty percent off any three pieces of clothing every season turn. And did you buy a bunch of Abercrombie clothes? No, I mean you thought that they were the shit back in the day, but then man, you'd be cruising around that store just representing the store and looking at tags all day long and just like flipping tags. And, be and like, you what you, the you gotta fuck? fold the clothes and act like you just yeah. threw it right. No, you don't no, actually no, no, fold no. it. You gotta no, act no, like you just had, threw it no, casually. No, they had they had uh, they had folder boards and all that junk. Yeah, but you gotta act like the clothes are a little messy, right? When you fold them and just what toss them around. No, they're not actually folded. If you go in Abercrombie, maybe now, but when, back in the day when I was working there, that you had to fold. See, them. now they, they they you're supposed to act. It's supposed to look like shit's just tossed around, but it's it's planned out. Well, I guess. I mean, it's a pretty messy look for young people, honestly. Well, they have what is Hollister? It looks identical to Abercrombie, but it, even the store looks the same. Uh, Are they owned know. by Abercrombie? Maybe it's an awful looking brand. Yeah, but this—that's th- where I shop Ho- Hollister. <laughs> <laughs> just because I was like, it looks like, like Abercrombie was fucking cheaper. It's probably what it is. Abercrombie just putting out cheaper shit. I think there's an upscale Abercrombie called Rule R U E H L or something like that, which is terrible. I don't think it's grown all up, I don't think grown it's up all guys the same should shirt ever be made in China. AF stuff. Ever. This is China destroying us. They're like, hey, we'll sell you shit for a dollar. Just charge these Americans forty nine ninety nine for a t shirt. I think they had their heyday, honestly, back in the day. Tell them you don't want fat people wearing it. it. It's ridiculous. A pair of shorts, like sixty bucks. Like, come but, on. But think dude. how ridiculous that is. It's a piece of cloth with a logo on there. Right. But we don't want fat people wearing this logo and ugly people. They can't wear this logo. Yeah, that's right. I mean, he, the fact that he said that. Have you seen this guy? No, okay, but that's he's a cro- th- th- You got to Google this guy. His name is Jim <laughs> Jeffries. Okay? And, and this guy looks like he. Th- this is literally what he looks like. He's a cross between the old Biff from Back to the Future, Sloth from Goonies, and then the Beast from Beauty and the Beast. And then finally, the Mask. The, you seen yeah. that movie Mask? Mm-hmm. The Jim main Perry. character, yeah. No, no, not mask. Not Jim Carrey's mask. That's too good looking. He looks like mask with chair. Oh. Okay. The Rocky Dennis character. Okay. He looks like that, that fucked up looking. It's a cross between all that yeah, shit he put together. Look good. He's not, he's he, not. This is the ugliest CEO ever. <laughs> yeah, pretty And much. he's telling people we don't want ugly, fat people wearing our clothes. Yeah, it's pretty. That's the funniest part of the whole story, I think, is that when you look at him, you're like, okay, dude, come on. That's but, and that's why I don't wear clothes, man. I'm too fucking ugly to wear that Abercrombie <laughs> shit. Yeah, I don't. I don't mess with that place. There was at one point, like back. In Is the it day, even cool wearing, anymore if like a 33 year old guy was wearing Abercrombie? No. Like at what yeah. age is what age <laughs> can you not wear Abercrombie anymore? 21. 15. <laughs> I think at 21 you stop, honestly. Or maybe do no, they no, make no, no. waist sizes above like through 20? college? <laughs> through college, I think it's acceptable. Maybe through college, back in the day, not anymore. Like, Abercrombie's not even cool anymore, is it? You know what's cool through that stands the test of time is Polo Ralph Lauren, if you think about it. A polo shirt has never lost its cool. Never. Yeah. Like, never, ever. Neither has khakis. Neither has the flip-flop. You know what I'm saying? Like, those are classic things. Yeah. But these stupid, like, transition, Like, they Abercrombie would have cargo shorts that could be zippered into pants. Like, they had the weirdest things. And, like, all this... Th- dude, their logos were so blatant. It was ridiculous, man. It's, like, sh- right, right across your pecs. It's, like, it's F. <laughs> like, holy <laughs> shit. No one cares, dude. Their stock was going through the roof at some point. Yeah, many times, actually. Yeah, well, you know what? I, I need I need new clothes at this point. So I need to figure out what is what can a 33-year-old wear? I, I can't figure... I'm, I'm getting to the point where... My my whole closet is those uh, shirts w- that that have the the old English writing on it, kind of like UFC oh, type. So douche. With like fucking gems on there. You yeah, know, it's you like know, I have like sewn and yes crosses and fucking that what are they, that yeah gems and rhinestones. That and, was the point where gay. I stopped just shopping for clothes. Dude. I was like, fuck, I don't need any more new clothes. Fuck. So I'm stuck in that era of clothes right now. You know what I call those things? What? Scribble shirts. <laughs> because they, all I they actually, have is just a bunch of meaningless scribble on them. Yeah, dude. I don't know what the fuck they say. You can't even dude. read half this shit, but I'm, I stopped buying. I, I, said, oh. I said, I'm too fucking old to give a shit about what I'm wearing anymore. And that was the era where I stopped you're, buying clothes. You're basically wearing you know what, So everything I wear has clothes. fucking baubles and f- it looks like Christmas dude, decorations. You are wearing an Affliction shirt without the Affliction logo. Yes. Basically is what you're wearing. I used to shop at Buckle. 
So actually, when I was waiting in line at a nightclub once, so I, this was so embarrassing. It was like me and all my buddies. And then we get to the front, and the guy looks at me, and he goes, bro, you're too fucking shiny. You can't come in here. <laughs> <laughs> too what? He goes, you're too shiny. I don't get it. So just like I was – my shirt, when I moved around, it had fucking like sewn into it those oh, little shiny God. little uh, – I don't yeah, know what they call sequins, sequins dude. This fucking I still have this fucking sequin shirt. Arctic crash decorations. <laughs> I've washed this thing so much, half the sequins are falling off. Like I have to collect sequins out of my washing machine. Dude, just retire all that stuff, man. Just go buy some. I can't throw it out. I spent, dude. I spent sixty, seventy dollars on some of these shirts. Get yourself some V-neck, bro. That's it. Man. This was at the tail end of like I, I'm. I'm still gonna try to dress trendy. But I'm I'm, I'm stuck with all these fucking things. Polos, man. Yeah, polos. polos. Bonafide hit it on the head, man. Ralph Lauren polo is like. I the mean, one I walk thing. out of my house some days, thirty-three year old man in sequins with fucking <laughs> old English writing on my shirt that that says some stupid fucking yeah, phrase it like says something really stupid every time. I, like I, only, I don't even know. Only what, God will judge me. But. Yeah, it's 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 <laughs> all my shirts have crosses on them. They're stupid, man. I have a shirt with a giant cross. And, and sequence. And you barely believe in Jesus or God. I don't believe in Jesus. Gosh, why are you even doing... Uh. Listen, they, they had it in the front display on a mannequin. It looked fucking good. You're like the only dude in this town that probably has those things. It's it's embarrassing. <laughs> Seriously. I'm in a hippie town wearing sequins. They're probably thinking you're like the other hipster that's trying to re- redo the movement or something. And I've gotten a little pudgy since I first bought these. You know, it, it looked great. Dude, they're but all I was faded, too. I've noticed that. They're all faded. Are they? Yes. Uh, see, I, 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 I've gotten tunnel vision with these shirts. Dude, I think they dude. look good. They or look- I think they look. I think I can walk out and no one will know. <laughs> I go fucking. Listen, dude, it's faded, bro. No, let me explain what happened. These were like clubbing shirts and picking up chick shirts back in like uh, 2000. Like, what what year would do you think these were? Like oh two old, bro. And now this these have turned into fucking go to H E B grocery shopping exactly. with my kid shirts. So I'm going I'm going grocery shopping in skin tight shirts with crosses on them and sequins. With my kid, people must look at me like, "Who the? F- what is wrong with this fucking? Is he about to go clubbing with his kid?" You look like you just came out from underneath an old Z twenty eight that you're working on. It's like just ratted, tatted, just no, you, you all know, kinds of bullshit and stains. And no, it's here's like, the craziest the part: <laughs> like some of these shirts are mowing the lawn shirts now. So I'm mowing, <laughs> I'm mowing the lawn in a shirt, like a skin tight shirt with sequins and a giant cross on there. Yeah, and you tell me like you have trouble making friends in this neighborhood. <laughs> Fuck, My neighbors must be like, this guy is about to go clubbing, but he's going to mow the lawn first. <laughs> he's about to go clubbing in the past somehow. <laughs> he must have a time machine. In his I just realized I'm mowing the lawn somewhere. in a fucking affliction shirt with sequins. I just fucking realized that. It's like not even an affliction shirt, which would be. It's a fake affliction. It's a affliction. It's, a, it's, a, it's totally fake. I'm wearing a fake affliction shirt with sequins to mow the lawn. I just realized that. You need to retire. Holy those things, shit! Man. Retire. Sometimes you mow the lawn with fucking white socks and I know like flip flops, and that's a disaster. Oh, too. you see me you do get, that? You cannot be doing that, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you cannot be sli- flip flops. Only require just feet, dude. If you put socks on, it looks really bad. I can only fly. I'm in shock, dude. <laughs> I just realized I mow my lawn in fake affliction. The shirts only person sequence. that can do white socks and flip flops would be Putin. <laughs> That's like the dude, dude you can wrestle bears, you can do whatever. Well, he's the guy. If he does it, it, you better do it too, or you're fucked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, he's 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 sending people out to get you. But My yeah, favorite true. move. All right, there's two of them. I like the cholos that wear like the shorts with the fucking knee high oh, socks, <laughs> and the old men that wear like black business socks with shorts and bl- and brown loafers. I actually mow the lawn that way sometimes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I remember back in the day, the ugliest fucking shoes ever, and you would be like, those are old person shoes that were called SAS. Remember those? Oh, man, yeah. They still make those. Uh, yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> They're so <laughs> ugly. Oh, my Lord. I'm about to Google them. SAS. SAS shoes? We would just call them sorry-ass shoes, because like one person in high school like warmed to class one day. Are these it? You fucking wearing SAS? Are these it? They're just hideous. Every one of them is hideous. Look at the one in the top right corner. 
<laughs> the fucking Velcro. Oh, shit. It's so ugly. I actually have worn Velcro shoes. Velcro shoes are cool. What's the last year you wore Velcro shoes to wear? Like you remember? Velcro or Velcro? Because everyone, vel- everyone had Velcro shoes as a kid, right? Because you can They're tie cool shoelaces. Now. Kangaroos, Kangaroos, right? Kangaroos are cool as shit, yeah. But Velcros were like Velcros way cool. out for a while. I think even New Balance I think had a couple models. Fifth grade was the last time I wore Velcros. Velcros are awesome, dude. Why the fuck isn't everything Velcro? It, everything should be. Why am I tying shoe shoelaces? Is old technology. Why the fuck? Listen, technology makes your life easier, and you don't have to remember as much shit. Like it makes you dumber. Hey, dumbass! They make shoes that have drawstrings now, which are majority of my shoes. Really? Yes. How's that work? Because when you draw the string, it's a long string hanging at that point. And you tuck it into the tongue. Really? It doesn't get in your Go way. Get the fuck out of here. Dude, I'm telling you the truth. I wear a lot of Solomon shoes. I need, I need to get these drawstrings. I, I like Velcro. Velcro is cool too, but you can't get the support and everything if you're doing trail Why the fuck don't they have zippers on shoes? Because that's... Zippers would be great. You just zip up your shoes and leave. Maybe. It just wouldn't look as good. But the, the size would have to be very accurate, or it'd have to be elastic. <laughs> Look at you overthinking custom these fit, damn shoes, man. Custom fit zipper shoes. Dude, you're going to have, like, old school clubbing shirts and old school clubbing pants and then, like, fucking Velcro. current no current day shoes, and people are going to be, like, really, really, really confused. If you <laughs> see a guy in Austin, and he's mowing the lawn, but he looks like he's about to go clubbing in 2003, <laughs> that's Dizzle. That is Dizzle right there, dude. <laughs> Do you wear way too much cologne before you go mow the lawn no, in your, your sequin <laughs> shirt and your, your black business socks? <laughs> I, I have mowed the lawn in flip-flops and, and black socks. Like, I'll, I'll get off of work and just go into shorts, but I'll leave the socks on. Yeah, you'll do that. Because I, I drive by your house every now and then, and I see you, like, in these weird garbs, and I'm like, God dang, he must be gardening or something. <laughs> 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 or working in his garage, because it's always, like, you in like no color coordination and then like these <laughs> socks and then like flip flops. I'm like, fuck. Damn. It's like chick raid, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like <sighs> exterminate all the girls around here. <laughs> Thank God I found a wife, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. She probably you probably found her when you had those clubbing shirts and everything was all fine and dandy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's she like, thought you were gonna still retire that fucking shit. wearing these fucking uh, have you seen that shirt of mine where like the neckline just goes way too fucking low? I've seen all I can't of them, decide. Dude. I can't decide if that shirt still looks cool, so I'll bring it out every now and then. That's the only time I get to wear clubbing shirts anymore is when I go grocery shopping for diapers. So I'll be like, well, let me try it on. Maybe the chick that's ringing me up the cash register will be like, God, that's a sexy shirt, and she'll say Fuck something. No, dude, she's not Nobody thinking that. Dude. Shit. No, she's not thinking that. She ain't thinking that. Dude. This is a black shirt, right? And it, She's like, hurry up, douche, and pay for your diapers. <laughs> <laughs> so this shirt is black, and it's it's got, like, dragons printed in, like, fucking uh, gold gold flake. Like, is that the one with the red accents? No, no. This is – I got a lot of dragons and Buddha stuff on my shirts. God. And they're horrible. I have the most horrible like wardrobe. like an 80s karate kid <laughs> thing. <laughs> you just need to get one of those. All bands. this shit that you don't even believe in, dude, but you're buying all these it's, shirts with it on there. Yeah, I got crosses, Buddha. It's like me saying, I don't want any. I uh, it's, I can't even imagine what. I can't put. It's like me saying, I don't like fat chicks, but I get all these shirts with fat chicks all over it. It's, you know? it's a <laughs> bunch. you just walk around with Twix in your pocket. <laughs> it's like it doesn't make any sense what you do. You don't even care about this religious stuff. You it's don't care all about religion. crosses. You don't uh, care about Buddha. You don't care about any of this shit. I'm realizing my wardrobe is you really fucked it up. It's, I think it's, your wardrobe's going to send you to hell, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't uh, make any sense. I'm, I'm, I'm almost speechless because I'm realizing my wardrobe is so fucked up. It's, it's, it's all skin tight <laughs> shit, right? Yeah, throw it all away, bro. Dude. Yeah, no, all of it. I seriously, dude. The worst. All right, here in L.A., like, I just spent so much yeah, money you, on that shit. That was the time where I spent the most on clothes. Are what? there any Armenians in Austin? The guy that ripped me off on my BMW. I never, I never saw an Armenian in my life until I moved out here to Los Angeles, and they're fucking everywhere. They're like the plague out here. But the funny, I mean, I swear to God that you'll get like a fifty, sixty-year-old Armenian dude that'll wear the same shit. You're talking about, but it'll have the big old pot belly, but it'll be wearing the skinny, like skin tight shirt, skinny, skinny, skinny arms, big old pot belly just bursting out. <laughs> <through those fucking. laughs> 
And like some Wearing, Armani Exchange like, glasses or something. Oh, uh, dude. Yeah, Armani Exchange glasses, big old hairy goddamn chest. With the yeah, culture. yeah. You'll <laughs> see the skin tight with the fucking, like, the low neckline, hairy chest. That makes no Seriously. sense. And you look at those guys and you go, do you have a wife? I know you got a wife in her own somewhere. How the fuck did she let you leave the, leave the house like that? At least they're not mowing the lawn in that shit. <laughs> That's the fucked up part. You know how sometimes you get in front of the mirror and, like, you might change one or two or three shirts. But either way, when you leave the mirror, you're like, I fucking look good. You know what I'm going to do? These fucking guys thought that, and they left, you know? Hey, let's do this. You don't have kids yet, Bono. If, if, now you get to the point where you just go, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> if, 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 uh, if any of our listeners are this far into the show, I'm going to take a picture <laughs> of like my wardrobe. One dude left. No, no. I'm going to take a picture of my wardrobe and tweet it one out. One guy hanging on to your fucking shirt. He's like, dude, the fucking funniest <laughs> shit ever. All 39 other people have dropped off by now. At the guy spot. I'm gonna I'm gonna tweet I'm gonna tweet out and put on the Facebook uh, after the show's been released my wardrobe. You should sign. I'm gonna put five of my shirts. Fuck it. You should just sign. Away. Yeah, sign. Sign all five and fucking. Okay, give them away. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. All right, so we're having a give contest. Metal head to wear to a fucking Sepultura concert. <laughs> Oh my God. All right, I'm having a concert. Dizzle's giving away his fucking wardrobe, dude. You can either mow your lawn in it or go clubbing in 2003. <laughs> You'll wash the grass stains out first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm giving away my wardrobe. All right, here we go. How, how do we make this a contest? Help us, Rob. Um, what do they have to do? Maybe you can put you can put get after they listen to this podcast you can put a link on Facebook saying guess what you think the shirts look like, and then the person that gets them closest to them gets the pile. I got it, I got it right now. Which religious icon is being desecrated? <laughs> the sequins. No, just put how bad do you fucking want these shirts? And they yes. have to tell okay. you in one no, sentence how bad titty they picks. want it. Titty picks, record, titty picks, titty picks. Titty record picks. us an MP3, a wave, whatever, an audio file, and and mail it. Email it to T H E S H O W at the guy spot. T H E G U Y S S P O T dot com. I thought there was a turd in there somewhere. (laughs) No, that's that's far from center. Oh, that's far from center. That's your show. (laughs) (laughs) So so yeah. Record us a a WAV file or MP3 or whatever. Just send us an audio file to my email. Of how bad you want it? Yeah. How bad you fucking want this shirt? How bad you want Dizzle's five shirts? Yeah. And the best five responses, we'll play them on the air. And if you're a guy with titties, then we'll send the fucking pictures over to Rob because he keeps saying titty pics. They don't have to be your titties. They can be anybody's titties. As long as they're big, bouncy, jiggly titties, everybody wins. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm I'm, I'm going to – the next few shows remind me to talk about my wardrobe being given away. We're giving away my top five shirts. And this shit – the amount of gold, uh, how much gold prices are up now? If you melt these shirts down, <laughs> it's, it, it costs more than the there might fucking shirt. in there. Yeah, there's definitely some gold, like print and some fucking sequins. That's what you're gonna get. I can tell you one thing, absolutely at this point, that's certain. You know what that is? I'm not gonna be making an MP3. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna see one from Bonafide coming through, man. Uh. Cool. Well, hey, Rob, do you, we're about to wrap up. We're at the two-hour and eight-minute mark. You got anything to uh, add? Uh, titties. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, how do, how do people listen to your show? Yeah, so you can check out uh, Far From Centered uh, on iTunes or uh, farfromcentered.com. Uh, yeah, that's right. We put it out, uh, upload it Sunday night, so it's on iTunes every Monday morning. Uh, and I do a mini app usually throughout the week, usually on Thursday night. Uh, and check out my blogs. I'm also, uh, I just got hired on to write for this online men's magazine called Iron Mike, which uh, will be out in July. And I've already written a couple articles for that. It's pretty cool. And you can buy my book, Love Me When I'm Gone, on Amazon or iTunes. Very cool. And Bonafide, what's going on with you, man? Not much, man. Just uh, still trying to wrap up the book and everything and cranking away on my channel man making good videos how do people access your channel and what does it oh, do it's really easy you just gotta go to youtube and just put in a uh, bona fide hustler or bona fide hustler chris and you'll find all the videos that'll teach you how to make some spare money in your extra time and this is legit right it's no uh harrison or whatever that guy's name is anthony Mor- what? it's no anthony morrison shit no this is the real thing man i got yeah. people from all over the world telling me they make money off of yeah so. basically he'll tell you how to flip stuff and make some money on it and uh, don't forget to add us on uh, 
uh, Twitter at the guy spot. And please just go to our Amazon link on our page on the right side and buy your shit from there. Uh, send us your best MP3s or audio files telling you why you want Dizzle's wardrobe. And, uh, I will mail you some shirts with grass stains on there. On the winter, hey, the <laughs> that winter, look like they were club shirts. The winner the one is going to get uh, played on air. By the way, the winning. Club. Yes, well, we're giving away five shirts. So, uh, if you the five best clips. Yeah, and then you can take pictures of you mowing the lawn in there. Don't and then, make them too long. Make these clips very short, guys. <laughs> However long you want. Just make them cool and be... Do you uh, realize you're going to get like a 10-minute fucking clip in and we can't even play that on air? <laughs> hey, I'm dude! Dizzle, nuts. dude! I want your fucking shirt, dude! It's going to be Metalhead calling in. <laughs> I'm going to tweet these out. People are going to be uh, shocked by what I fucking mow my lawn in. <laughs> and yeah, buy groceries good. in. No, maybe you shouldn't because maybe you should just wait for the ones for the MP3s oh, to come in. Then you surprise them so how terrible now. the shirts are. <laughs> But you have to sign them, though. I'm just thinking, like, all the stuff I do in clubbing shirts from back in the day. Like, hardcore clubbing shirts, man. Mowing the lawn, uh, going to the doctor's office, the dentist. Um... Oh, dude, do you ever go get your prostate checked in one of those shirts? <laughs> <laughs> like, I noticed how you said you didn't get any pussy in any of those shirts either, which is not good. Imagine that, dude. I'm bent over in a chair. <laughs> Some doctors <laughs> hand up my ass and sequins oh, flying in. Like... hand there, doc. <laughs> I swear, some of these shirts have so many sequins, I could be in the Middle Ages, like as a knight. I mean, that's what I look like walking in. I look like a disco ball in one of these with fucking Buddha on the front. <laughs> it's like a Buddha disco ball. God, I'm so embarrassed now. I I, I didn't even think anything of this. Just get rid of them, dude. Just get rid of them. Plain, solid polos, bro. Plain that's colors. just, it's the easiest shit. You can get stains all over yourself. Nobody gives a shit. Buy another one for 20 bucks. <laughs> I actually mowed the lawn True. today in a fucking a shirt with a giant uh, fucking cross on there covered in like these little uh, like they, they, this one had a bell on there. I think <laughs> this one had a fucking bell like on the very top, like like jingles. <laughs> Jesus. Anyways, hey, we're going to get out of here. Thanks to Rob for calling in. Don't forget to send us an audio file for the contest. We're out of here, and peace. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Thank you.